five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. All right, here we go. Podcast number 17. 17. Here we go. I got Tina and Sean with me today, and then I got my boy, Brett Dumas. And right next to him, drum roll please, <laughs> we have Tony Rossi. <laughs> haven't seen that kid in years. The one and only. He looks majestic, <laughs> though. So thank you very much. I can't really see you from where you are, so we'll catch you on the other camera angle. <laughs> So we're trying something new today. We're looking for a new camera angle. So Brett has been nice enough to take over that tonight um, with his handsomeness. And we'll see how it goes. You know, it might be, who knows? This could be the spot. It is. <laughs> Are you comfortable over there? Yeah. I just, I just if, we, if I stay here, I need an end table to put my wine on. But other than that, we're good. Oh, you know what we can do? Yeah, I'll have to, I'm yeah. going to work on it. That's a good idea. Yeah, like a little, you know. Some sort of. And those little electric fireplaces. What? I got one right down there. Yeah, well, it's yeah, it's not a here. fireplace, but yeah. it's uh, something for ambiance. Something yeah. close. If you like infrared lighting, that's perfect. <laughs> it's got to be a special chair, though. Like royalty. That'll be this. Oh, like, like a well, chair. Like how, a how about the Games yeah. of Thrones chairs right behind you? Yeah. yeah. That doesn't look comfortable. I'm no, going to be honest. No. <laughs> Get a sword right up the caboose. So, <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll definitely work on that, Brad. That's a good call. Um, cigars, anything? Yeah, it's up to you. I mean, we can smoke down here. I, I wouldn't turn down a good cigar. Do you smoke cigars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been known to. Uh, so tonight's going to be a really cool episode. Um, so we have Sean from Rainbow Rescue, which is very you know near and dear to my heart. And then we have Tina. Go ahead, Tina. Tell me who you're from. Mason's Mission. Awesome. And we have Mason's around here somewhere. Is he, is he laying he's down? He's laying on the floor over here. Yeah. So he's excited because he has some his men down here yeah. today. And uh, Masculinity for a change. <laughs> yeah, he's thanking us with those eyes like, I don't want to leave bros. <laughs> if he could have wine. Bros before hoes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to him. So thank you guys for coming down. We'll give each other um, a little over there. Tony, what do you got drinking over there? Is it just water? Yeah, I'm just drinking water. Wow. Nobody likes a quitter, Tony. I know. <laughs> um, you know, thanks to the podcast, I became a drinker again. So, you know, I went five years without touching and drinking. Now yeah, and yeah. Now, you, now you're opening the bottles of wine on your own instead yeah. of waiting for me. So, this Brett's is... bringing <laughs> bottles of wine every Monday. You know, next thing you know, I'm gonna end up on my neighbor's lawn <laughs> in rehab. Can't wait. Well, that's, that's good. Then you can have 19. him as a guest the next week on the podcast. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, true. Tell me about the time when you found me on your lawn. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, first of all, you were naked, so that was very inappropriate. And then, so he'll never get that vision out of his yeah. head. You know, the odd I mean? thing was, it was eleven in the morning. Oh. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to work, and there you are. <laughs> Wait, are, are we at lemons? <laughs> oh my god! So you're going back? We're, we're gonna have to touch on that tonight. <laughs> no, we won't. Yeah, we are. The old, old stomping grounds, man. Yeah. Mingles. Um, where else? Geraldine's. We, oh, oh, Geraldine's. Was, yeah, the Wrinkle Ranch. That Wrinkle was a Deans. fun spot, though. Yeah. That was like the Thursday night spot, I think. Yeah. Remember Selectrocution? Selectrocution. Selectrocution. I can't say that, but. They used to do yeah. Geraldine's. They used to do it at <laughs> Katina's and Hadley also. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that yep. place. Yeah. Because that one was 18 plus, wasn't it? Correct, Katina's? yes. Yeah. And I think even Pearl Street dabbled in Selectrocution yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah. My boyfriend yeah. went there. I wasn't too pleased. <laughs> I, my so my name used to be GQ all the time. I used to get there early enough to get it. <laughs> Just it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Yeah. So you know, like sir, you realize the bar is empty right now. I just need <laughs> I need GQ. <laughs> I got to get drunk before anybody gets yeah. here. This doesn't start till tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so Mason's right here next to me. He's my new buddy tonight. So we might have yeah, to bring his uh, blanket over here because I think we're best friends now. A <laughs> uh, buddy. All right, so let's get this thing started. So Sean. You are yep. the co-founder of Rainbow Rescue. Oh, before I forget, Eye Candy Randy is wearing the Rainbow Rescue shirt right here, so he's part of the team. Very yep. nice. Um, he has his glasses on tonight. You know, I don't know if you guys knew this, but he usually wears contacts. And then he has his, uh, I don't know what kind of hat you call that, but. A beanie. It's a beanie. A beanie. He's looking pretty yeah. sharp tonight. I almost brought him one of the uh, uh, new baseball style ones, but I forgot to grab it. Oh, yeah. He changes it up every now and then. It all depends on how he's feeling. You know, but we're, we're getting there with him. 
He doesn't. He didn't. He outgrew the uh, Boba Fett helmet with the uh, <laughs> Santa Claus <laughs> thing on. So he's getting older. You know, as we get older, we change things. So you know, he's got to hide that knife wound inside his gut right there. <laughs> so yeah, again, you're the co-founder of Rainbow Rescue. Yep. So tell me, um, when did Rainbow Rescue um, start? Uh, official was 2008. Um, my sister and I started it. Uh, it was uh, uh, shortly after, like maybe a year or so after our father passed away. Yeah. Um, we were always those kids that brought home, you know, oh, hey, look, I found this injured bird. I found this injured animal. Like we were always bringing animals home. Um, and then friends would always call us, hey, I got this animal. It needs to, you know, find a home. Can you help us? So we said, well, you know what? We've been doing it. Why don't we just actually set it up and do it legal? Then we found out what it actually takes to do it and went through the <laughs> learning process of all the paperwork and, you know, filing that you have to do every year. It's, you know, so exciting and fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how it started. And it just kind of took off from there. It just, uh, you know, started with just the two of us slowly building things out. It's a process, man. I remember when we rescued Samson and, the, and my wife was like, we have to foster. And at first I'm like, come on, I don't want to do that. Like I wanted to give Samson like this amazing life. Yep. And we want to take him everywhere, do everything, you know, and once we finally reached out, I'm like, all right, let's do this. And the first place turned out to be a sham. And then um, we called and we met um, Robin. Yep. And I remember, it's funny too, because every once in a while, the memory will come up on my Facebook and it's like, we're going to be fosters. We're going to be fosters. And we were so, um, so happy. And then the first foster I got, the first night he was here, she was here, she broke her leg. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yep. It's it's that luck. It's you know yeah. things happen. So I so called. Sean didn't like you in the middle. <laughs> uh, well, he it was, was an actually accident, honest. He was actually so good about it. Like I was freaking out. Like so the dog jumped on a, jumped up on the counter to grab a sandwich, and then she slipped off the counter and came back down on one of her legs. Oh God. And she started limping. I'm like, great, here we go. But I'm like, all right, she'll walk it off. She probably just sprained it. You know, we'll see. And then the next morning, she's barely able to walk. And I'm like, we got to call Sean. And I remember calling my wife from work. I'm like, that's it. We're done. First dog. We can't even <laughs> We can't even do this right. It's already like, what's he going to think of us? You know? And so I called him, and I, he could tell I was all upset. And he's like, listen, oh, yeah. dude. He goes, the first dog I ever had got hit by a car. Oh, Jesus. The, yeah. Yeah, and, we, had, we had one that um, it, wasn't, it wasn't one of mine personal, but it's. It was a, yeah. Uh, we've had a one foster. The dog got loose. Ran out, got hit by a car for one foster. Did it? Um, it's not that one. He he made it. Um, yeah, it's it, we've had amazing. I don't want to say it's amazing, but a multitude of different things happen that are just accidents. It was nobody's fault. You know, uh, one that the dog was bigger, pushed through the door, was able to get out. Um, we had a husky that pushed the air conditioner out of a window, went running through Springfield, Ludlow, <laughs> and a few other towns for five days. Came home on day five and was sitting at the door waiting to come in. It's just, it's, we had a puppy jump off a set of stairs, started limping, brought it to so the you vet. give the, your dog steroids is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. It, we've, it, I mean. It's in their food. It's, yeah, it's amazing yeah. what dogs will do. And, it, you know, and when, once you're in rescue, it's, people have their, their dogs at home and, you know, they have the occasional accident. Yeah. Then you do rescue and now you have 20 dogs all doing something different at a different house. Right. And it just like it snowballs sometimes. It's like you get one phone call, this happened. Oh, this one's sick. Oh, this one's, you know, decided to eat something. We had a bulldog that decided to eat a pacifier. Swallowed it. Whole. Giant. He had to have surgery, have that removed. It wasn't anybody's fault. He just happened to find it and he ate it. You know, you can't blame anybody for it. Yeah. Do you have specific vets that you work with? Yep. Yeah. Um, we know, I was actually in the 4-H with his kids. was Dr. Morcom in Mill Valley in Belchertown. Okay. Yeah, so he's been great with us, and then all the staff that they've had there, they're amazing. Yeah. They're one of the reasons we've been able to keep going. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. When I did it years ago, I was I came to Palmer, Dr. Haroulis over here at Palmer. I don't know if she's still there, but she was amazing, and she was one of the reasons why I was able to, to rescue because it gets costly, yeah. and I did everything out of pocket. I was completely oblivious to the whole raising money thing at the time. Everything I did was out of pocket. And oh, I was yeah. like broke all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know that feeling. So, but she was amazing, and then I just couldn't do it anymore. But yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had like our our highest year was forty thousand dollars in vet bills. Oh yeah. God! Mm -hmm. I mean, we had multiple surgeries. I mean, you do do a knee replacement. That's five thousand yeah. dollars, and that was discounted. You know, so it's it adds up wow. fast, and 
it depends every year. Some years, like this past year, has been slower. We haven't had a lot of, as much vet work. But years in the past, yeah, it, it adds and up And now you fast. guys do dogs, cats, and all domestic? They do it all. Yeah, basically, yeah. if I've got a foster that will take it in and work with it, we'll take it in. You know, we've had dogs, cats, potbelly pigs, guinea pigs, you name it. We've you get any chickens, in. put me down. I'll take the chickens. I love chickens. <laughs> I love the sound <laughs> they make. Chickens or ducks. Yeah. We've, we've, what we about actually, bees? That we, bees that need to be? Yeah, if you I got any know. bees that need fostering, <laughs> I, I can add the them to the 150,000 I have. Uh, I just actually took in, uh, they, they call them cull ducks. They're the miniature ones. Yep. I've got seven of those. Guy raised them from an egg in his house in a crate, and that's where they stayed. Oh, so, wow. You know, What's the um, oddest animal you've ever taken in that you would have never expected? Um, it'd have to be like one of the lizards. I forget. Uh, oh, I cannot remember the name of them, them, but they, they're a type of frog that gets about this big. And we just happened to know somebody. They were a teacher, had a bunch of them in the classroom, and then she had to get rid of them. She had nowhere to go with them just happened to be at an event where we met this guy buona jim he okay. does um exotic animal shows and he has a whole school where he has kids come in and they can learn about the f- exotic animals and we set him up with coordinating to pick them up and bring them back to where he where okay. he has a school that's pretty cool yeah we've had some so the best one of the best stories that we, I, I ever had um we were going to a place in belchertown what, what was that called bark no. Um. Oh, um, it's it was uh, through Bark. Uh, they they set up the program, but it was for the uh, uh, the new um, animal control officers facility. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna bring two of our pigs, and so I'm like, I'll wrangle Wait, those you have pigs. Pigs here? We we did. Oh, not here, but oh. at, in the in the rescue. Yeah, in the we rescue. Had, <laughs> yeah. Uh, two pot belly pigs. We used to have another like the first one that thing was thing called. You said to me when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> We used to have one pig called Kevin Bacon. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. He was he was our first one. We yep. named him Kevin Bacon. So I get there, and of course you have to put these boots on because we're going in their pen, and they're you know they're slippery little bastards, you know. But I I did great. Like I had the hands yeah. made for a woman, and I just guided them right in, and yep. uh, she was like, "I can't believe you just did that." Yeah, because normally they don't. They those guys were not used to being in a, you know, transported with crate, yeah. crates and stuff. And I'm like, Maria, these hands yeah. are made for women. This is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny part about this whole story is it gets worse. So we have a great, great time at the facility. It was yep. really cool. Um, and I'll mute my phone. Um, and just so people know, these weren't those tiny little, no, these were big pigs. pigs. These were 50 to 75 Full pounds. Size, yeah. 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 So now it's time to go. We're packing things up and these guys are like, we're not leaving. And so I got to wrangle these things back in. And if it wasn't for Sean, the one would have got underneath the fence and he would have took off. Oh, yeah. Sean, like, stiff-armed them. <laughs> you, you have to. They're you so know. strong. That, yeah. I mean, even at that size, they can barrel right through you. Oh, I bet. Yep. He had a knee going on one of them, the okay. stiff arm, and this guy, this pig was still trying to barrel through. And they're making a noise. visuals of this? Yeah, it was funny. And they make, they make, a, they make a blood-curdling scream. Like you're killing them. So all yeah. these people are stopping what they're doing, looking at us like, what are you guys doing to these two pigs? And we're 60 all we're pounds to of do. ham and bacon <laughs> charging at you, screaming bloody murder. <laughs> it was so funny, but we we got them in. And uh, we, had, we had a set that we had to wrestle. To, you have to trim their feet every so often. And you literally have to rock them back and hold them in your chest and don't put your face to the side because they'll swing their head side to side. And they scream. So you're not doing anything to hurt them. You just just like cutting your your fingernails. Same thing for the pig. Scream like you were killing them, and then you put them back down, and they're like, "Oh, yeah. okay." They just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Now, what else? Do, what do you have now? You have a. You still have the llama? Is it a llama? Uh. Well, we have uh, the, personally. We have the cow, two goats, and the sheep. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Um, yeah. Yeah. What was the cow's name? Mabel. Uh. That, uh. That's Trixie. Oh, Trixie. I, yeah. I'm like terrible with names. Yeah. I can barely understand what kind of animals they are. Yeah. I never said I was she's, smart, so. She's gigantic. She's like the size of a draft horse. Yeah. She's huge. She's a big girl. Yeah. And she thinks that she can just grab you with her head and throw you in the air. I mean, I'm over 250 pounds, and she's picked me up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. When she's playful. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So one of the reasons why I'm having you guys on today, too, is we're going to do some education to, with people out there that who are interested in fostering. You know, right now with COVID, it's a little weird, and but you know, eventually we'll be out of that um, that uh, blackness and back in where we can start helping again. Do you want some more wine? Sure. So right now we're drinking. She's the only one that has the proper glass. Us Neanderthals <laughs> are drinking out of. Uh, My friends are going to watch this and go. She does not drink out of that. She is not proper at all. <laughs> 
So today I'm we're always afraid to spill a wine glass, so I drink out of a, <laughs> like a rocks glass or a regular glass all the time. Did you read? Did you listen to the last podcast where they talked about Brett never spilling a drink? I bits and pieces of it. Yeah, no, it's not pretty impressive. So <laughs> one of these days on the podcast, we're gonna set him up with a drink and we're gonna start pushing him and see if we can get him to spill a drink. We're gonna test. This. <laughs> I did it the other night. I passed <laughs> out. <laughs> passed out. Like this is like my resting spot now. I don't have the big shelf like I used to. But like right there, like where your sternum is, I've always just been able to, like, I just rest it there. And my wife had to take it out of my hands a couple nights ago. I fell asleep with a glass of wine just like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I always picture, like, Brett for, like, a superhero kind of thing. We're like, what's your superhero? Like, I can go invisible. I can see through yeah. walls. And there's Brett. I never spill a drink. And everybody's <laughs> like, oh, I, that's odd. Like, all the other guys are like, but I can do this. And like, no, that's not even remotely a superhero. Brett doesn't so, spill a drink. So there was, a, the, and we're going to go way off subject here, but I kind of have to tell it because there was one time where I let everybody down. We were up at, uh, <laughs> we were up at Lake, Lake Winnipesaukee and there's, there's a, um, there's a restaurant, you know, there's a whole bunch of restaurants and bars right on the water up at, in Lake Winnipesaukee. And one of them had, um, you know, tables and chairs where you could kind of take them and, and move them just into like into the water. So if it was real hot, you could kind of have, uh, oh, you know, cool. your feet and stuff in the water while you're sitting at these plastic tables and chairs, you know, the ones you buy at like, you know, Walmart and stuff. Yeah. And I was sitting, you know, it's sloped obviously, you know, cause it's a shoreline and I was sitting kind of with my back towards the slope and the back legs of, I sat back in my chair and the back legs sunk in to the lake bed oh. and I went over and I had a full drink and I'm holding it <laughs> above the water, but I was stuck in my chair. Oh, that's funny. So I had to roll over, you know, I'm on my back underneath the water, except for my drink. <laughs> and I'm like, the only way I'm going to get out of this is if I roll in, I have to, I have so, to dump so the drink. So here's a question. Were you thinking about, I can't breathe or I can't spill this drink? <laughs> no, the drink was the priority. Yeah. Like I, I mean, if I was underwater for what felt like a minute, <laughs> contemplating what I could do to save the drink and myself. And not ruin your reputation. And then finally, I think I made the right choice. I saved myself and not the drink, but I got nothing but shit about it for the rest of the... And oh. all of a sudden, I was the drunk guy because I fell back in my chair, you know? Yeah. Um, which might have been accurate, but either way. <laughs> that's fun. That's hilarious, man. The drink always comes first. Like, that's his motto, you know? He's like, as I was going back, I'm like, shit. <laughs> that's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt, right? there the drink comes first he bubbles up through the water save the drink <laughs> they try to give him a mouth to mouth he's like no the drink the drink i'm telling you so yeah we've had some really crazy uh stories when it comes to animal rescue and so in your own words like what can you tell the public when they start to, to foster what can they expect i and when it comes to fostering expect everything to go wrong and not that it's going to be your fault just because you never know what's going on. Like, you know, we get the animals in, they go to our vet, they get an examination, but you don't know what's going on, what they've been through mentally, physically. So things are going to pop up that, you know, you may find out the dog's deathly afraid of, you know, a slamming door that's going to set him off. Or yep. it could be cars driving by, or all of a sudden, you know, I personally, one of our, my very first dogs I fostered was a pit bull who was so deathly afraid of movement that you could wave your hand and she'd cower to the ground. She had scars everywhere. Um, I'm assuming from some of the scars was used as a bait dog because um, there was a lot of bite marks and things like that. It took me six months to get her to understand that my movement wasn't going to cause her harm. Right. Um, and that's, you know, we, when it comes to fostering, I, I you know, I'm not going to first time foster and go, here's the hardest dog you're ever going to have. Bam. <laughs> yeah. You know, Good luck. I try not to do that to everybody, yeah. you know, and we try to fit your household that with the, the type of dog you can handle, you know? Um, I think that's the part that people misunderstand about rescue and fostering is they think that they're going to get an animal that's just going to tear up their house and be a complete nuisance to their lifestyle and their family. They don't yep. understand that there's communication that's involved and, there's a process, there's an interviewing process to figure out What's what work. the match is going to be. Yeah. Um, and then you go from there. I mean, some people may foster one animal and decide this isn't for them, but it's almost like they think they have to commit to that for the rest of their life. Yeah. And it's what you don't understand is once you start doing it, it's, it's, it's hard to stop. Once, yeah. once your heart gets involved yeah. and you see the amazing impact you have on this living being's life, people don't understand. Yeah 
what and, that does for yourself, not right, only for that right, animal, but right. what it does for you as a person. Yep. And then there's the support of the group. You know, I always tell any of the fosters I meet, if there's a problem, you call. Yeah. You know, don't, don't sit there fretting and pulling like your hair yourself. out. Yeah. yeah. We're here to help. You know, it may not be a perfect fit every time. <clears throat> We're going to do the best we can, but if it's not working, we'll take them out. We'll get them somewhere else. Or if it's something we can help you with and fix. You know, it's not like you're just, you've got the dog and you're responsible for everything. Right. Yeah. You know, that's a, I think you, you did, always did a great job with trying to match somebody with the right foster. Yeah. And I think people need to understand too, like it's not all lollipops and butterflies. No. You know, if you don't like peeing on, dog peeing on the floor and those things are all things that we deal with in the beginning. And it's our job as fosters to try to get that dog trained and for that dog to understand that. There's certain rules that we need to follow, but it's a process, right? So it takes a, takes a couple yep. weeks. Sometimes it can take a couple months. I mean, we've had dogs pee in yeah. this house. That's why I don't have rugs. Yep. Um, get rid of your rugs. Don't <laughs> ever have rugs again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, get ready for fleas. I mean, there's all sorts of things, but it's it's not that. It's it's what we're doing long term. It's 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 what our goal is to get that yep. dog rehabilitated, get back into a regular home, and hopefully. They do the right thing, continue the education, those kind of things. And, um, you know, so that dog doesn't ever have to see. Yeah. I always tell our adopters the same thing is it, if there's a problem, I don't care if it's 10 years down the road and you need help with something, call us and I'll do my best to help, whether it's a training issue or something like that. And if it's something where I don't think I have enough knowledge to help you, I can at least point them to trainers that we recommend yep. that can help them with the dogs. And I say dogs just because we see more dogs than we do anything else. Right. Um, but, you know, any of the animals, the horses we've adopted out, you know, I've been raised around horses. I know many horse trainers, so I've got a lot of knowledge there. Not saying I'm an expert in any of this, yeah. but just through years of doing this and being around animals all my life, you pick up a few things here. And right. There. So tell everybody what our horse's name was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, there, there was, there was, let's see, Bruce. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. What was the... That one specific one you were thinking of, trying to remember what we named. Oh, uh, his nickname was P-Stain. So <laughs> yes. P-Stain because he, he was a uh, paint, what was considered a paint, but his, his paint was so light that it actually looked like just a, like somebody sat on him and peed and it stained his back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So his nickname, it didn't officially go into the system as P-Stain. It wasn't promoted as P-Stain, but his nickname in the group was pee stain. He had the collar yeah. that said pee stain on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he came from somebody who, you know, was trying to get rid of him on Craigslist. We found out about it. We were able to get him taken in, had him for quite a long time. You know, it was a, it was a good year and a half. I think it was at least easy. Um, I had found, uh, someone who wanted to adopt him that he, they were actually down South of the area. We were, had just coordinated transport where the day I'm getting ready to put him on a trailer to go to his new home, a uh, young lady who wanted to foster with us saw a picture of him and goes, that's my horse that was stolen from me 10 years ago. Oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah. It's a true story. Yeah. That's my peace stain. true story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I'll know that peace stain, stain anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It was like just in, incredible. And like she had paperwork. She had pictures of her riding him, everything else. And wow. basically she was younger, had some health issues, and they leased the horse out to somebody. And that person got rid of the horse and didn't ever contact them. They weren't able to find him. Oh, wow. So she spent years trying to find him and just randomly he was there on our, our uh, website when she was filling out to do fostering. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Isn't that crazy? That's very, <laughs> yeah. that's like fate right there. Yeah. 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 So once we, once we got it all set where he, you know, I, I knew that she was his original owner, packed him up, drove him to her house, dropped him off and he's back with his mom. Enjoying life. That's awesome though. Yeah. It's a small world, uh, you know. Yeah. People say all the time, it's such a big world. It's so not, you know, and life has a w really weird way yeah. of <laughs> circling back on you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. So one of the things I always get when people hear about fostering is they're like, I'm never going to be able to give that dog away. Well, I have four or three examples of what that's like upstairs. So that does happen, so you know. three and, out of your four are fosters? Right. Yeah. Fo yep. Foster failures. Foster failures. Yeah. We, we always call it foster <laughs> failure. Yep. I've, I've done it a number of times. Usually it was dogs who weren't going to get adopted anyways, um, had issues where probably if they were somewhere else, they would have gotten put down anyways because of the issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up, you fall in love with them, you end up keeping them. Yeah. Yep. 
Because as fosters, you kind of, the more you work with them, the more you get to understand them, you know? So, like, all of them upstairs, they move an ear. And I'm like, what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> and they look at you like, he knows what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah. So, we, we get to have this bond with them. And, like, Luna. Luna, Luna yeah. came to us from um, a, f- a friend of ours that's in rescue, um, asked us for a favor. Yeah. And I said, and I fell in love with her the minute I saw her. She's beautiful. She's um, a Calaluna mix. She has like a patch, a black patch around her eye. Mm-hmm. Her One of her eyes has like a starburst in there. Yeah. She's yep. gorgeous, but she's a legit psychopath. Like <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer has got nothing on her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. She, she's like a wind up toy, man. You're like, boom, and then she's gone. But she will sit in the window all day long and then look two streets down. And if one leaf moves two streets down, she's on, she's on it. You know what I mean? The mailman, you know, she thinks she's doing all the right things. Like, Dad, I, I chased away the mailman, the UPS guy, the FedEx guy, because they all leave. So in her mind, she did everything she Success. was supposed to do, you know. But if anybody else had her, they they would definitely have oh, put yeah. her down by yeah. now, yeah. without a doubt. So is, is she it, not friendly to most people? Or she's is not she friendly just, to anybody. Well, Jenny, she's friendly with. Yeah. Um, she's more friendly to women. She'll she'll kind of keep you in the like in the zone. But if you're a guy, forget it. You're yeah. you're toast. So, so if you're about so to write down she, her, she'd be all over us. Yeah. Was she abused by a man, maybe? We don't know. The the people that had her before me definitely didn't abuse her. They were awesome to her. Um yeah. they just couldn't um, they, they did everything they could to yeah. try to make it work and it just wasn't working yeah. for them. Um, and unfortunately, not knowing her history, you, you never know what happened that caught, you know, it's some, some dogs, they're, they're born just, their wiring is just to off yeah. where they have anxiety issues. Mm-hmm. Some are made that way by someone abusing them or something happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we don't know her history, so we don't know what caused it. So how many um, issues did you deal with when you first took her in then? Oh, uh, we had a, we had a lot. There yeah. was... Yeah. I mean, movement issue, you moved one. And here was the thing. I think she bonded with me first. Because when we first met her that day, I took her for a walk inside yeah. Dave's Pet Food City. We went together. Yep. And uh, so the person that gave it to gave her to us is in Animal Rescue. She has a phenomenal story about a dog she rescued that um, some guy hit him in the head with uh, some kind of... It was a shovel, I think it was. shovel, tried yeah. to kill him, and then dumped him off in the woods right down the street from here. And uh, was, was in love, though. And uh, she was one of the... Uh, detectives that had to go um get him and you know it cost her a lot of money but we, they raised enough money to get him help and she took over that and she she's so involved in animal rescue and uh so because she's so involved and i have such a high respect for her i said let me let me take her and and yeah. th- the fear in her face when i first saw her was you know yeah. So we bonded that we, that that was something me and her bind, bonded, and we were on the couch together. I always bond with dogs and chips, like Doritos. I'm telling you right now, if you have a dog, <laughs> Doritos a is dog's the heart. chip. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get your hands on some Cool Ranch, I'm telling you that's the way to go. So who picks up the poop from that? You or your wife? <laughs> <laughs> My wife. I don't. I don't. I'm not a pooper. I I can't smell it. I can't. Like even when the kids were small, if they. I'm like, God, can they wait till the mom gets yeah. home? You know, sometimes it's I have to change. Let's have like six foster dogs. I don't have to clean up any of the poop. It's so easy for me. Um, Fostering like, dogs isn't that bad. Even though my wife has a brain injury, I'm like, listen, that poop is not going to pick itself up. Let's go. And chop that firewood chop, chop, while you're out, out there. there. <laughs> yeah, the car needs an oil change too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she, she came with a lot of that fear. Like the fear in her was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, um, in... Four years now? Yeah, we've had her for four years now. Yeah. And we're now just starting to break through that fear. Like, we, we had her medicated for a little while, yep. but that didn't seem to work. And no. I didn't like the way she <clears> – it wasn't fair for her to be sleeping all the time. And yeah. I, I couldn't work with her like that. So um, I said, you know what? We just – we know that how she is. We made that decision to keep her. Um, Sean was gracious enough to help us out the entire time um, oh, yeah. and, like, take care of some of the medical and stuff in the beginning. Yep. And um, so we decided, like, one day I looked at my wife. I'm like, she's not going anywhere. Like, and she loves me so much. Like, when I come home, she has to be the first at the door for me. She lets me hold her. She doesn't let anybody hold her. But I'll pick her up, and I'll put her on her back, and I'll talk to her. Oh, and even I'm, still, you're the only one that holds I'm her? the only one, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Yep. And so she yeah, lets me she went me totally do, like, you're her dad. Like, right away was like, oh, this guy's the guy. I, you know. Yeah. She's like, he's so handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know. If she's bonding with me that much, 
there's hope. And, and so let's continue to give her, you know, sometimes it's tough with her though. I, I'm telling you it, it sometimes we have to put her upstairs and in, in, like in, in our bedroom, but it's a safe place for her. It's quiet. We put a fan on in there. So let her detune a little bit. You know, we take right. away all that sensory overload for her. Um, where if someone else had her, they, they would probably be physical with her. They'd probably be on hands with her. You know, we don't have, I don't have to do any of that. So, so that's the one that barks when we come in. Um, well, I'm you, sure they all you, bark you, you haven't seen her yet. No, I know I haven't yeah. seen her, but I can hear her yeah, dog yeah, upstairs like, barking. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. that's her. Yeah. And uh, she's she's better than any alarm system we could ever hope for. I got, I got yeah. one of those too. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. What yeah, kind of you, uh, it's a um, a Labradane, so he's he's a lab Great Dane mix. Oh wow! wow. Um, and if there's a car, uh, and I live on a busy street, mind you, if there's a car within. I don't know, a quarter mile of my house, I know about it. <laughs> Especially if it's a truck or a delivery person. You know, well, those car- are our top of the food chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. So cars, usually they get a pass because there's so many of them. But if you're any form of truck or delivery person, and especially if you have any type of special lights or anything anywhere on your vehicle, yeah, I know about it. I, the The mailman, I hear about him from when he gets onto my street until he's probably halfway down the end of my street or to the end of my street. And then when he gets back to that halfway point, I, I, you know, back and forth pacing, whining. And then when he's in sight for however long he's in sight, there's nonstop barking. Defcon four. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. And I feel bad because like the, the my dog has a, has a chair that's his own chair and it's right by the window that's next to my mailbox and my front door where all oh. the deliveries come. So it's gotta be pretty intimidating to see so i mean you know he's he mo- looks mostly like a lab all black with some little bit of white um but he's probably over 100 pounds yeah so he's just basically like a king size lab yeah and he just stares down at anybody who's at that door and it, it's got to be pretty intimidating of course the slobbers all over the window you know it's like uh cujo you know when they're in the car and there's like slobber all over yeah it's that's what that window looks you like. know what you should do get some of that fake blood and just smear that on there you know <laughs> Be That's like, actually Whoa. a good idea. The cops will be at your door. Get a fake arm hanging out the window. Oh, that'd be priceless. You just be the UPS guy. Just be chucking packages from the other end of the driveway. You know? But yeah, so it, it's it's really important for people to understand. Like you are, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes we do our best yeah. um, to yeah. place the the right dog in the right house. Um, but like with me, we just made that commitment, and and it's uh, we don't. It's funny because it doesn't bother us. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, you, with certain dogs, you, you get that attachment that you know they have an issue and you can help them through it. And that, that is kind of the harder part is with taking dogs in like that that need that rehab work. Um, people looking to adopt are not looking for a project in right. a sense. They that's want a dog that's going to come in. Yeah, be part of the family and be yeah, done with puppies. it. So they all think everything's a puppy. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, we get so many people that are like, well, I don't want to adopt a senior because they're going to die soon. So I want a puppy. And I always explain to them, you can get a puppy that could get sick and pass away. You know, a senior, you know, say it's eight, nine years old, you could still get another, depending on the breed, another eight, nine years. And that's that's a long time to have with them. Yeah. You know, it's not just, you know, the seniors still have a lot in Even them. with a puppy, though, a lot of people don't realize what they're signing on for when they get a puppy. Puppies are, I feel like puppies are more work than a senior. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, anything under two years old, yeah. I feel like yeah. a lot of work. I mean, yeah. you're going yeah. nonstop, yeah. and you're, that training process, people think that you just tell them no, and they, they got it. Yeah. Like, nope. <laughs> we, we had a gentleman went out and bought, a, bought from a breeder a golden retriever puppy. Brought it to one class, then called us and said, it doesn't know anything. It's been to one class and knows nothing. I don't want this dog. And oh, I'm like, Jesus. you've watched Air Bud one too many times. <laughs> Please sign this. Here's the paperwork and yep. we'll take him in. Yep. Um, another one is people that buy gifts for uh, their, you know, to keep their elderly parents, yeah. you know, company. Uh, there's one couple, they, they bought a uh, border collie from a working <laughs> dog border collie breeder. Like these are dogs that run, they are working sheep and everything else. And they, they had them, they got them a puppy and they, I think they were 87. Oh, Jesus. And not saying 87 is, you know, extremely old and they couldn't handle it. But for them, it was too right. much energy. Yeah. 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 One of the smartest dogs in the world and you're yeah. trying to not keep it entertained because yeah. you can't because you're 87. Yeah. Right. And yeah. he's, he <laughs> yeah. is literally, he is on a farm working sheep. Yeah. You know, that's what he loves chasing sheep. It's, you know, they have a small farm, a couple of sheep, and he gets to go out there, chase the sheep, keep working and that they trained him for it. Yeah. So that he has his job. 
you know, one of the other things that we... Um, he wants to put his two cents in. Oh I know, is that, is that him over there? I can yeah, hear Mason's something. Got something. that noise? Is he Mason's growling? got something to say. He's like, you guys are ignoring me. He's pissed hearing about that border call. He's yeah. like, those idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was my boy. <laughs> you know that guy? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I mean, so one of the other things, you know, when people say, I couldn't let him go, you know, like I said, we get that. Yeah. And there's been times where, you know, so my, my best one that we have was Coco. Yep. I so Coco. I, I told the story in the podcast before, but I'll say it again. So we drove to Cape Cod somewhere, Plymouth, right? I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was out, yeah, out towards the Cape, yeah. And traffic was brutal. So it took us like four hours almost to get out there. It was insane. Yep. So one of the hardest things to do is have the dog with you for that long, knowing full well that you have to drop him off. And me and Coco definitely, um, we... Just had the best time. I mean, we bonded so much. Yeah. So I used to be the kind of person that had shades on all the time. Like I was, every picture you see me, I had shades up on top of my head or on. They were, you know. And, rainbow uh, colored ones. I don't know if they were rainbow colored. <laughs> yeah. Oakley? Yeah, Oakley. They Oakley's. Oakley's. They were definitely Oakley's. You know? They were definitely Oakley's. Maybe some fakely's. We yeah, yeah, they were definitely fakely's because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not buying that stuff. So I'll be straight up transparent. Now. Um, four ninety nine at the Cumberland Farms. Let's go. You know? <laughs> Sun and, uh, style. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It actually, I, 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 I bet you, as I still have them upstairs, I, I think it had the fake Oakley on the side. It was like just the, just Please, the. You used white out and you wrote Oakley. <laughs> 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 yeah. and I'm not saying I never did it. You know, it just never got cut. <laughs> so we were there for a while. The, the boy had autism and, yep. um, th- yep. you know, and Coco was a very uh, timid w- and we knew that someone who, she yeah she had, had to work with those kind of dogs yeah she had come out of an uh basically animal control had taken her out of a situation where she was kept almost 24 7 in a crate so she had you remember she had no uh muscles in her back legs yep. she was her back was actually hunched because she just could not she wasn't even uh the cage itself wasn't big enough that she could actually stand up oh, Jesus. so it took Took yeah. time to get her to actually start learning. I told you not to make me cry. Work those muscles. <laughs> oh, I told you we're making you cry tonight, and then when the camera's going to be focused right on you, so yeah. let's go. <laughs> I didn't bring my Oakleys. You know what? Me. You know what we should do. We, <laughs> we get. The, you can borrow his. <laughs> yeah. We should we play that. Cry cam, I like. should have downloaded that music from Sarah McLaughlin and then played this in the background while we're yeah. doing that. The angels. Oh, arms, arms, arms of the angels. Every damn time. <laughs> There's like a perfume commercial that has that, and I hear it, and I run to the TV shop. I'm like, all right, it's just the perfume commercial. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I hope that perfume finds a home. <laughs> Those commercials are brutal with that song. It's on purpose, man. I'll tell you. Yep. Works. I say I know. I'm like, hey, give me a thousand dollars here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Just need feed the, the damn dog. <laughs> yeah. I don't need it for a month. <laughs> so we, uh, and the boy was, so, he was so good to her, and yeah. she started warming up and. Next thing you know, she's laying down and Sean's like, Sean always had that great timing. Like she's okay, let's go. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not ready yet, man. And he's like, we got to go. And I, so Aww. I went to go say goodbye to her and I started crying. So he looks right at me, goes, get in the car, yep. <laughs> threw my sunglasses down. And I started bawling all the way to the car. So he gets in the car and it was just that, it was that, that we, we, the respect was there. Like he understood what I was going through. I just sat there. I'm like, oh, and I, I just fought oh, yeah. like, I couldn't drive at first. I'm just like, and he's like, let it out, man. I'm like, I can't cry. cry, cry. So was that the first dog yes. that you had to release from your care that you felt like that about? Or was um, just one that you just connected with? You didn't expect to connect like that? It, it was, you were more involved with her in the sense of her care and that rehab. Right, yeah. And then we don't, we don't normally allow the fosters to do a lot of the home visits and things like that. Cause you do get attached and then nobody's perfect. Like, oh, this person can't have this dog. They're not going to handle yep. them right. They're not going to do this right. Oh, yeah. Um, approval. You know, Jeff yeah. was Jeff was with yeah. us that long enough where, you know, and he was like, I, don't like I knew Jeff. I knew, I knew Jeff right. could. Your furniture sucks. It's not comfortable <laughs> yeah. enough for this dog. Yeah, plaid. I don't leather? think so. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I knew Jeff could, you know, look at things, you know, logically and be able to step back. But there's still, even for me, I mean, there's those ones where I've, I've had to tell my sister, you need to handle this. Because I will not be able to judge this properly for these people. I've gotten attached to this dog. Yeah. You know, it, it happens. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. That was the yeah. only one that I literally uh, was just going to be a bumbling idiot about for uh, yeah. the whole way home. So. And, it, and with the emotions, too, it's harder because you're, you're dropping off a dog who's used to you being with them. Yeah. So you're dropping them off. You want it to not be a lot of emotion because then they start freaking out. Yeah. Um, 
That's why a lot of the times I'll actually have the family bring the dog in another room, give treats. I don't even say goodbye. I just disappear out the door and then they're distracted into this. Oh, hey, these people are giving me treats. We're hanging out. This is, you know, it's not, there's not that stress of, oh my God, that guy that brought me here is leaving. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the joy of, we have a fireman in West Springfield that we used to run into all the time. Yep. Stand up guy, him and his wife are just the best people ever. And it's kind of like a family that like you see these people for years down the road and we get to ask about the dog, you know, yeah. so we, I don't, we don't, we don't run into, oh, I don't run into a lot of them, but, um, you know, you definitely have over the time. Yeah. And, uh, and some people do send us pictures over the, or over time and we'll call, you know, like you'll be thinking about, oh my God, how was, you know, Co you know, Coco or somebody doing, and we'll contact the family just to check in and say, how are things going? You know, what's going on? Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's always nice to hear that things are still going good. Right. And the other point too, is to make sure that if you have a significant other that wants to, um, foster with you like you guys got to be on the same page yeah. you know yes my favorite one and i won't name any names but i went to have a conversation with the wife and she was amazing like i'm like oh this is gonna be the best house ever her husband came in and he was uh i could tell right away that this wasn't gonna work and uh sure enough down the road the dog ate the door <laughs> and uh we had to go pick him up and he literally threw the kennel at my wife Oh. and said some very inappropriate things. I and mean, he's lucky I wasn't there, but um, I'm like, so those are the things like that, those, that, that, fa that team, that family team needs to happen. That yeah. conversation needs to happen. And um, people need to be aware of just, of uh, it's not always lollipops and butterflies, but in the long run, when you get that dog placed, that joy, that feeling that you get, that you, that's, you can't describe that. I mean, yeah. and, and you know you what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So I've learned that, I can't have a nice couch. I can't have nice floors. I can't have, you know. Uh, your yep. place is beautiful. I saw it. Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> now it is. Um, but no rugs. Know, I've had molding, like Scout, one day we left and he ate all the molding around the window and then into the sheetrock mm -hmm. because he had separation anxiety. Um, but once we realized that he had to be with Samson, because we used to put Samson in a kennel. Well, Samson was one of those dogs where I trained him right from the day we got him and he was pretty much okay alone. So we started testing him. We'd be gone for like 10 minutes and we come back in. Everything was fine. Okay. So now we're going to give him 20 minutes and then we'd be gone for 20 minutes. Everything was fine. So we started ratcheting it up to where we could be gone all day and they'll all just lay on the couch. Yep. Yeah. And people always tell us, you know, isn't four dogs a lot? It's, it's really not because they act like a pack. Yep. So yep. when the new one comes in, like we have, uh, uh, we call him pee head. Um, so the funny story about P head is he's, uh, what kind, of, what kind of dog is he? He's, uh, like a hound mix. He's a hound. I think they had corgi? that group had Catahoula, something else, Corgi. Like it was a, it was a weird mix. Yeah. So he's yeah. a gorgeous, but he's not going to get very big. And, uh, so Samson being the big guy that he is, and he stands about this tall off the ground. Well, not that tall, but he goes outside one day and pees all over, all over, uh, um, Liam. Oh and my God. All, and I mean all over him, peed all over him. And, and then continued to pee on his head. So we call him pee head. That was what my daughter called him. Speaking out. of pee, he might have to pee. Huh? I might need to bring him out. You gotta go out? I'm going to be that person right now. I'm yeah, you want to go do that? That's fine. Yeah, I might need to bring him out. Okay. Well, Tony can bring him out too. I'm just nervous with the stairs. That's all. I don't want you to take it personal. No, I don't take it personal. There's there's protective mommy right there already. <laughs> <laughs> wrap him in plastic wrap. <laughs> All right, hurry up. We're on a we're on a podcast, woman. Let's go. <laughs> so yeah, but I think you know people. Uh, the, the the gratification you get afterwards is when you know uh, you got them up, into yeah. that, that right home and everything's working. You know, and and I've always tell everybody it's you could have the world's best trained dog, bring them to a new place they're going to have an accident. Something's going to go wrong because they're, they're adjusting to that new situation, a new home. Right. And what's the average time that it takes, you think, that a dog, once it comes into the house, takes time to adjust? Uh, I've, I've seen it two weeks in. It's like they've they've always been there, and I've seen it take six months. Um, we had actually had a St. Bernard that I, I brought, him, brought her to her new home, uh, kept in contact with them. They said that for two weeks she stood at the door watching out the windows. And after two weeks, she went, you could see her just sigh and go, okay, I'm here. 
and it was like she just kind of assimilated in. Yeah. And other dogs, depending on that, those anxiety issues that they have, et cetera, it takes some time to get used to stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, so you only have that one dog, Brett. Yeah, he's he doesn't really get along very well with others. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know if I would have another. You know, either way. Um. But. Yeah, so the, the main reason, like, we've even kind of tried to just dog sit, mm. and it doesn't really work out very well. We have, uh, ironically enough, he, he's okay with cats. Wow. Um, Usually that's a no-go. Yeah, <laughs> so we we, um, we we adopted one cat that uh, was a kitten but still kind of seemed borderline feral. You know, she was kind of found outside, and we didn't know any history and she didn't get along with anybody and she kind of you know beat him up a little bit even though she was tiny and then just bolted one day you oh, know wow. even though we were trying to make her an indoor cat she just jetted one day yep. and never came back yeah. um and then we got another kitten uh that was found uh by the chickabee water department in in a sewer drain oh wow it, the first day they were doing an inspection they found the mother and the kittens and then the next day they went back and it was everything was gone except for this one kitten and she was the runt so she was still actually when we got her my sister-in-law works for the water department and so that she took it and we grabbed it from her and we still had to feed it formula and everything it was so young um and he absolutely loves her oh wow yeah and then now tony brought his kitten over most recently and she's not much older i don't think than that and he was a little taken back by it you know because he's kind of an old man now um, but now he, he's cool with her too, you know, so he, yeah. he, he's fine, but dogs, he's, he's doesn't play well with other dogs, but and how so old is just he? the one, uh, he's old now. It's, I know it's funny. Cause you, you, you mentioned the Facebook memories thing, how uh, one of them showed up. Um, he just showed up as us kind of sharing the post from the rescue where we got him from. And I want to say that was eight years ago and he was estimated two to three. Oh, wow. When we got him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's he's up there. He's at, I'd say he's at least nine or ten, uh, based on our estimates. You know, so he's showing a little age, but he's still got a lot of energy. Um, you know, and he's he's a fantastic dog, but he does like to bark. That's yeah. and run. Yeah. He loves to chase cars. Does so, he really? Yeah, he. <laughs> and he's not very good. No leash manners. He doesn't get a whole lot of walks when there's traffic. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, late night walks, yeah. stuff like that is okay. Yeah. But, that's yeah. a big dog dragging you down the street to chase yeah. the, the truck. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like, hey, kids, go take the dog for a walk because the he the dog would just run down the street with them. You know, yeah. it's got to be usually me or my wife if we're going to walk them. But. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. You're like, come on, fight. we're going to go for a walk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but he, he's he's fantastic. But he just, yeah, I, I, I actually, you know, would consider, you know, fostering or something like that, but I just know that he's he's not up for it. He, yeah. You know, it's not yeah. his thing. Yeah. The saddest foster I can remember was Couch, the Great Pyrenees. Yep. So we had this great Pyrenees, mm. and when we got him to foster, he literally came with towels because he would just drool the entire time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, He'd get the shoestrings. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we should wait till Tina gets here because this will definitely make her cry. Come on, <laughs> s- settle in there so you can... Uh... Oh, no, he's got to go again. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about our... Uh, make sure you pull up really... There you go. Yeah, so you can see yourself a little bit more. A little bit more. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going. Like I yeah, can't. Keep going until you're sitting on the table. So um, we were talking about the, the, one of our saddest ones is, uh, so we had this great Pyrenees, and his nickname was Couch. Because he literally took up the couch. Couch, yep. And he loved to lay on the couch. He didn't care who was up there either. You were making room for this big, big this big boy. Yep. And he came with towels because he drooled so much. Oh, God. Yeah. Yep. So he, had, he, had, he got the shoestrings. Uh, uh, Turner and Hooch, yeah. Yeah. that was this guy. He would literally, like, I'd be sitting on the couch, he'd put his head on my lap and just look up at me like, what's up, bro? <laughs> and then just want to be petted. <laughs> and you couldn't stop petting him. Like, you were locked in for hours if yeah. that's what he wanted. And if you scooted over, he would just <laughs> he would just move. <laughs> you know, and if you, had, if you had to go that way, forget it. You had to, like, do this maneuver where you sort of try to fake him out a little bit like a football fake and then go that way, you know? Yeah. So he gets adopted by um, a guy that just retired. And he's like, I just want a dog to hang out with and that likes to sit on the couch. I'm like, well, Sean, it's like we got the perfect dog. <laughs> yep. His nickname is Couch. <laughs> it's like you custom ordered him. <laughs> yep. And he, boy, was he spoiled, man. He had, this guy was spoiling him rotten. And then come to find out he had bone cancer. Yeah. So he only lasted a few months. Yeah. Um, before. He, they, they, 
I think they got, issues. I want to say six to eight months yeah. with them. Um, he was great, great with their kids, everything else. But yeah, the bone, once they have bone cancer, it goes so fast that, you know. Are you crying yet? Not yet. No. <laughs> Actually, he's got a pee again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to get you to cry. I'm doing everything nope. I can. No, nope, not going to have him. I'm drinking wine. I might. For I might the arms here. of the angel. <laughs> 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 Listen, yeah, Tony, yeah, I got the voice of an cry. angel. You keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I think your just <laughs> no, Nora, you can auto tune that later. Uh, auto tune is not going to take care of that. I <laughs> have the best voice. Just ask me. I'll tell you. Me in the shower. Don't lie. I'll tell you. So, all right. So it's your turn now. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So you have Mason's mission started in December of last year. Mm-hmm. So you're a newbie to this. I'm a newbie. Well, kind of a newbie. I'm a newbie on my own. Right. So talk to me about your journey. How did you get to where you are today? Um, when I was younger, probably in my mid twenties to mid thirties, I well, my mom was very big into animal rights. She was a veterinary technician. Um, bi- very big into animal rights of all sorts, factory farming to domestic abuse to everything. Um, so I learned everything I knew from her. Um, started rescuing myself when I got my my first apartment, um, mostly cats and small animals, a um, couple bunnies. I told you guys about the bats I rescued from someone's basement. Um, and then it just got to the point where it was, I was about seven or eight years in. And no, it was seven years. It was, it was seven years in, and I just took a break. I just needed a break from the almost the emotional, mental abuse you go through from the things you see. Plus, I didn't really have the capacity. I ended up moving into a bigger apartment, um, and I had a whole backside porch that I ended up screening in and closing in. The landlord was great about it, and I started again uh, for about two more years. I rescued mostly cats. I took in a couple of dogs, um, and again, just started to really need a break from it. How I was feeling about people Mm -hmm. (laughs) was becoming a problem. Sure. You get very Um, jaded. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so I stepped away. It um, It was making me a very angry individual, so I stepped away. Um, but I think probably over the past, I've, I kind of has, have always been on an emergency basis. People always knew they could reach out to me if they had an issue or they knew of an issue, um, or if a neighbor this or their neighbor that, like I would always step in and help them, you know, through the channels of how to help the animal. And then, um, I found Mason from, I was going to a gym in West Springfield and I saw him posted free to good home. I reached out to the people. So my first thought was anybody who's educated in that world, an animal of his breed and size, free to good home. He's going to be in the, in Springfield. He's going to end up in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I contacted the person with the intent to help her place him and explained to her why I was reaching out to her and saying, you know, free to good home is going to put this animal in a really bad situation. Everyone I, I, every family I met that wanted him, just, he wanted nothing to do with them. And, um, I ended up falling in love with him, and I ended up keeping him. <laughs> um, and then I always, for I, I'm going to say the last five years probably, or so since I've been back in Massachusetts, so, God, seven years now. I've been back in this hellhole for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> um, I've always thought about wanting to do something in his name to kind of help out and, um, you know, just help local rescues or hands-on or do something um so I did miss it I miss it like you were talking about earlier the satisfaction you receive in your heart you just feel like you did something so amazing and I just I came up with Mason's mission years ago and I just didn't have the drive or the confidence to do it and then all of a sudden last December I said you know what I'm doing it (laughs) I just started it and Rainbow Rescues was our first um event to raise money and I think you guys had more supply donations than cash donations. Yep. Um, but which right is always here, handy. Yeah. 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 Um, I always Absolutely. tell people there's there's no there's no nothing no donation that's too small. I don't care if it's a gallon of bleach or a thousand dollars. It's both both of them are going to help. Yep. Um, my initial desire for Mason's mission was to be a rescue. I clearly don't have the facility for that, but um, my new mission with Mason's mission is to help local rescues doing events online events right now because of covid um hopefully at some point i can do events more hands-on events whether it's a function or something like that um but i do events for the local rescues around here that can help them 
be more productive in the animal rescue field. Like right now I'm doing um, an online event for urban wildlife and um, it's just supply donations. I offer pickup. I will go pick up anything that you have. Um, I encourage monetary donations because I know that that helps more in a lot of cases. Um, But for the most part, it's just helping local rescues and, and on emergency basis, I will help somebody. Um, And hope with the hope that in the long run, it turns into a, a rescue where I can take in animals myself, like, I, like Rainbow Rescues does. So yeah. a rescue is, a, I, I imagine, it's a, if you're a nonprofit, you can register as a 501c3. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, so have you have you looked at, uh, you know, so uh, for instance, a lot of like restaurants, bars and stuff will do like, you know, percentage of purchase uh, or percentage of purchase for, you know, for a certain night gets Why donated. Yeah, yeah. So like I, I know for schools and obviously, you know, a lot of schools are, you know, nonprofit slash 501c3 um, or 3c, however that works. Um if you go to them, you know, especially if you, the most important part is just having your, your, your tax ID, your nonprofit tax ID number, um, you can have event nights. Um, so uh, I know um, Munich House has done some for both uh, Boy Scouts and, you know, local schools in Chickabee, um, you know, especially the larger restaurants, 99 and stuff like that. And I think actually uh, Griff was just promoting one recently in West Springfield where it's like, oh, 10 percent. Like, so basically, if you come in with a flyer so saying, I support, <laughs> you know, Rainbow Rescues yeah. or I support Mason's Mission. And then so anybody who presents that or talks about that 10 percent of their check um, goes towards that and, and, and they kind of pay it directly to yeah. you. Yeah, so I it's a, an, a, a way for them to drive business, you know, on a certain yeah. day. Usually it's a slow day, like a Tuesday or Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, and then they, they give a little bit of back, a little bit back. Yeah. It, it all depends on the, the restaurant. So we, we've done this a couple of times where we had really good turnout. Um, the restaurants were really good about it. Others where they were like, they have to show up between six and seven. They have to have the coupon and you can't hand them out inside the store or outside the store. They have to have them, you know, like they had so many rules and then they had to hit a certain percentage before they'd actually don't cover me. things yeah. so yeah it depends on the restaurant some are really good with it some, some yeah it, it we'd really didn't some want to see that you actually yeah. drove that extra business to them and that's right. the reason they're giving back yeah. we right. did one at the munich house and they just said no 10 percent of everything for these next two hours is yours wow, oh, yeah. wow. um okay. and i forget who and we were involved with for that but you know some are like you said are, are very generous yeah. and they yeah. just are happy to give back some want to see that boost in business from what you're promoting and to, 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 to give back. But yeah. Right. Yeah. And that is, that's actually one of my goals is when I said like hands-on events, um, you know, I would love to do different events at, you know, when I was in the bar business, my dream was to kick off Mason's mission with a big party at the bar and, yeah. you know, to donate part of the proceeds. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't have the time to invest in it. And then COVID happened. And I just said, you know what, if I keep making excuses, I'm never going to do it. So um, a friend of mine made me this shirt, Kim, Kim Itner made me this shirt, says Mason on the front, says Mason's mission on the back. Um, and she gave it to me for my birthday in November and she's, she got to do it. You just got to do it. And yeah. I was like, you yeah. know what? You're right. I'm just going to do it. It's not going to kick off the way I wanted to kick it off, but I'm going to kick it off. And yeah. so far it's gotten a lot of attention. Um, a lot of people have given shout outs, um, because I, I, it's not only to me, it's not only about raising money for local rescues, but spreading awareness. There's a lot of, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but there's a lot of lack of education in the world about what really goes on out there behind closed doors with some of these animals that really need help. Um, Whether it's a family that can't afford something to a family that's all out abusing an animal, there's just the, the amount of shock that you get when you tell somebody what happened to a specific animal is just, you don't know that this happens. Yeah. 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 And that's one of my goals is to raise that, awareness and I do offer help to families who may have an animal like you know you were talking about earlier you you might get that animal that's just difficult and you don't know what to do and training is a problem you can't afford a professional I've helped a couple of different families so far where I you know and I'm honest with them up front I say I'm not a professional trainer but I'm educated enough with experience that I can help you and if I can't help you at least I tried you know and then you know you can make the decision from there we we were able to actually get a grant for a while that we were able to supply a free training service with a behaviorist for specific oh. dogs that we knew had, we're going to need that adjustment period. Yeah. Um, so basically they got like a four to $500 service for free covered by the grant where the trainer would come right to their house and just do anything that they needed to help them out, you know, nice. with that, that That's adjustment. For too. Them. 
So yeah, yeah. it's a, it was a good grant. Um, it's something I once we get through COVID and kick things up, I'm hoping to do more of. Yeah. Who provides a grant like that? Is that does a private organization or is that like a state or, or like local government type funded thing just to keep strays and stuff? Or um, it, it basically the every there's the state grants that you can go for. There's federal, and then a lot of it is just different companies. Some of them that just that's all they do is grants. Mm. Um, they just do grants for different things. They have like, okay, for this month, grants are going to be for animal welfare. Uh, this month it's going to be, you know, um, feeding the homeless grants, you know, and it, so you got to catch the right month, get your paperwork in and hopefully they're, you're able to, to get in on the grants for that. Huh. Um, that is a hard part is understanding how to write a grant so that it goes into the system and works properly. Right. You know, it's not just yeah, right. I'm, I'm in the learning stages of all of this stuff. So it's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a process to get where I want it to be. But I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be something that one day when I don't have Mason any longer, it's going to be something that, you know, it's in his name and I can be proud of. And even being a rescue himself and how he came into my life, I think it's, it's going to be successful no matter which direction it goes. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. So, and he's kind of a, <laughs> Even when I was in the bar business, it's kind of a local celebrity in Chicopee. I mean, everyone knows Mason. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> so. that, that you you have him because no one or that he wasn't able to be adopted. Like he seems fantastic. Or was he, he just was a demeanor his demeanor that much different when you got he, him? No, he wouldn't connect with any of the families. No family I introduced him to. He just he was all about me. Yeah. All about me. I remember this one gentleman, Chris, he was would have been the perfect fit. Um, worked from home part time and then away part time and he just loved animals and I just was like trying to get him to go to Chris and just be with Chris and go meet Chris. And he just would constantly walk away from Chris and come back to me. And I'm like, no, 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 go, go to Chris, go to Chris. And he just was like, no, I want to hang, hang out with you. Yeah, <laughs> They pick us. That That's the, yeah. you know, yeah. the bottom line is that it, that's the way it works. We don't, we don't yeah. pick them. They pick us. I mean, yeah. it's uh, that's why Luna's here. Look at scout with my wife. Yeah. From the, so when my wife had her brain injury, the net, when she came home, so Scout, the first day we got him, I, I said to her, are you going to be okay with him? Usually I stayed for a little while, made sure everything was copacetic, but Cheryl was getting to a point where she was taking things on her own. And I got to Worcester and he jumped the fence in the front and took off down the street. Oh, Jesus. So she called me in a panic. We had his old foster here. Sean came. Yep. We had so many people here um, looking for him. And he was a couple houses down playing with the other dog. <laughs> In the backyard. No one even knew. We're all over the city looking for this guy. And he's he's a couple houses down. So, but when we, the day she came home, I remember bringing her home and he just looked at us like, like, what's going on? And he just looked at her and I brought her right into the couch and he jumped up on the couch and would not leave her side. Like I could barely get this guy to go to the bathroom, never mind eat. And he loves to eat. He, his head was right next to her. He had to be touching her in some sort of way. Yeah, they know. They know yeah, when something ain't right. Yep. Like something, yeah. And they created a bond. And he's, uh, you know, he's a funny dude. You know, he, he has this derpy look. He has one ear down, <laughs> one ear up all the time. You never know where he's looking, you know, because he must have had some kind of head trauma because he looks like he has that that look. Yeah. And maybe that's why they, they bond so well. But he is very protective of her. When, he, when she leaves, he'll lay by the sliding glass door and he'll just look out. Yeah, and you know, finally he'll give up at a certain point in time and go play with the other dogs. Well, I wouldn't say play is a wrong wrong word, but he'll <laughs> he'll go uh, he'll go lay down. But it's they they know, yeah. you know, and, and they have their humans. You know, Samson's my dog. Yeah, so is Luna. Um, but it's funny because at night Luna wants to sleep with my wife. Yeah, you know, and she sleeps in the crook of her legs. My poor wife, I have to coax one of the dogs up in my in my room so she can get some sleep. And, but the rest of them all want to be like on top of her <laughs> and she's so good about it. Cause I would not be, I don't like to have anybody crowding me when I sleep. I like to have room, you know, so you do, you do give up your bed. <laughs> you give yeah. up certain parts of your, I'm, I'm pretty much used to that. I, if the dogs aren't there at this point, I can't sleep. I, right. I'm so I used can't to sleep it. without him. He's, yeah. I'm, I'm like, where are you? Well, dude, where are you? <laughs> Cause I can't fall asleep. Where are you? <laughs> My yeah. dog has a, a wonderful, like I said, he has his own chair. You know, very fancy chair that he's just taken over and, you know, no humans sit in it. Um, but he 
gladly gives that up every night to come sit on his weird, you know, it's a dog bed, but <laughs> yeah. just so he can be in the room with us. Like yeah. he just, and I know I would much rather be sleeping in that chair that he sleeps in versus <laughs> the thing on the floor. Yeah. He's a little big to be in our bed, but uh, <laughs> yeah. And even and if his, if his dog bed, if he wants to be closer to sometimes he just sleeps, uh, you know, alongside the bed yeah. yep. and he's way more comfortable places to sleep, but he just has to be with us. It's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. Or they sleep in a, like Mason sometimes will sleep horizontal at the end of the bed, and God forbid, God forbid we move them. We get got to, they, they got to be comfortable. We just like I maneuver myself around him, yeah. and I'm like Jesus Christ, like, instead of just like moving them over. Yeah, mine are all growl. You know, you got to move, and they growl, and I'm like, don't you dare, man. Yeah, yeah it's not like sleeping like, like next to a human, or just like oh, I'm sorry, you know, like you know, both trying to be mutually comfortable. Yeah. It's just like what, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, like, can't you say I'm sleeping here? Yeah. <laughs> like I dibs, I licked this couch before you got here, so I, it is all mine, you know. Like yeah, well, at Mason's age, it's not only licking that's coming out of marking that bed. Yeah. I'm like, what? What is? What color is that? Where did that come from? He's old. He's got old guy stuff going on. Like, <laughs> yeah. yep. So we we were talking about that earlier. Like old guy stuff. Like you know, he's got the. The leaky stuff going on. He's got the the hemorrhoid cream, like all the all the old guy stuff that we all old guys. Uh, um, you know, I don't know if he even has saggy balls or anything, but yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, just for the record, I don't have hemorrhoids. I don't want to call you out, but you're on your own on the hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> he goes, the saggy balls, you got me, but the hemorrhoid cream, that's right, draw the line. Yeah. Where I draw the line. Yeah, like Scout, like he smells, <laughs> like he's got that old man smell. Yeah, you know? right. yeah. Mason has that. Yeah. yeah. I think I I think I had talked to you one day about like the Frito feet thing. I'm like, dude, yeah. there's got to be something. I can't, I can't do this Frito feet thing. Is like, it's, yeah, it is real. Feet. Yeah, my dog's got Frito feet. It's a real feet. thing. Yeah. Frito feet yeah. legit smell like Frito. Tony's looking at me like, what is wrong with you? No more yeah. wine for her. <laughs> Tony's like, I thought it was just me, not dogs too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Legit smells no like Fritos. Got that. It's I was awful. used to mine. <laughs> do you guys ever do that like weird smell thing? Like I love Samson's ears, and I'll smell his ear, and he looks at me like. Will you stop smelling my ear? I'm like, Did Daddy, smell in your ear. I'm like, and I, I don't know what it is. I love the ear smell. All right, you know, so yeah, that, so that and hemorrhoid in. cream. You're on, you're on your own. <laughs> we're all like, all right, so we're done now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you're no longer eligible to re- to uh, foster dogs because you, uh, you smell their ears. <laughs> I, I'll admit. Miss Piggy, my, my pit bull, one of my pit bulls, she, she's got, it's those ears. There's something that, like, she's got a smell to her ear, and there's, a, like, Bacteria? a feel to it. Yeah. No, no, no it's, it's just, just like, a, a, yeah. like the, their scent. No, the ears are super soft. Like, like, you can't, yeah. like, all yeah. dogs, yeah, well, you can't yeah, help but, like, I do, gravitate yeah. to them, the yeah. pet them, and I've, squeeze them. But smelling. smell them, yeah. but I do. I just, like, yeah. Next thing is, like, Jeff's, like, it, it, it puts the dog bone in the basket. <laughs> I'm like, don't tell mommy I'm going to pet your ears. <laughs> this stays in this room. You understand? No, Ma- Mason's got this new thing where, like, um, I'm sure you guys are fully fully familiar with this, but something comes out of his butt that's, like, Monsanto smells better. <laughs> now, are you trying to say we suffer from that personally? I think that was a personal, I think that was a personal attack. And I just want to say I'm like 10% offended by that. <laughs> My ass does not smell like Monsanto, <laughs> Tina. <laughs> I no, keep but, things fresh. That's right. <laughs> no, but it's like, oh my, like if I, I will never express his glands, I won't do it. So I will, I like, well, lots of fun times to, right there. Oh, the funk uh-huh. that comes out when they need to be expressed. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yes. what we ended up learning. It was because his vet was like, there's not like, they don't need to be expressed. They don't, but what come to find out it was just happening. And I was, I use baby wipes on his butt all the time. Mm. And I was just the, the muscles aren't yeah. holding things in anymore. So and it's the just last time they went, out. I'm like, listen, yeah. I'm like, I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you right now, something's come out of his butt that is not friendly. <laughs> it, it is really, it's a whole new different smell. It's like oh, it's yeah. someone dialed up the poop thing, you know, and like just yeah. cranked it right up. And you're like, whoa, whoa. Because you know, so Scout yeah. was having a problem one day where I'm looking at the couch and I'm like, what is all that on the couch? It was like in an arc. Like a charcoal. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And my wife goes, you don't want to know. And I go, yeah, I do. She goes, no, you don't. And I'm like, yeah, I do. She goes, well, he's rubbing his butt up against that. And then I could see him licking it. And I'm like, dude. Yeah. And you don't want to see your pillow either. Yeah. 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 He's like, he's trying to hide the evidence. He's like, if I lick this thing 50 times, no one will ever know it's my ass smell. Whenever I see him licking something obsessively, I'm like, God damn it. He did it again. Yeah. Like, what's that going to smell like? <laughs> yep. Yep. 
And so we took him to the vet, and uh, sure enough, they had expressed his glands. So he comes home, and he has this whole new look on his face, like, uh, <laughs> It feels so good. Relax now. Yeah. 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 The, the worst a... is when you see a dog that's gotten impacted, and it explodes. Mm. Ooh. That's and, happened with him. And yeah. it was like this green and black stuff that. Yes. You well, they, that. they've actually. I, I need a minute. We've we <laughs> had him actually come minute. in. <laughs> 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 I'm smelling it again. I'm traumatized. Yeah. Hold on. You better not do that's that here. Where is he right now? That, don't oh, feed him Taco Bell. That's number one. Tony, that's your job if he does that. You're cleaning that up. Every new guy has to clean I up. I always know. You know what's funny is I always know when he did it because he'll just be his goofy self and all of a sudden he stops. He looks at his butt. And I'm like, oh, hell. And I go yeah. get the baby wipes and I'm like, sure enough. They're fascinated when stuff comes out of their ass. They're like, yeah. and it's always a surprise. Yeah. You know, it's like 50 million times. Like, you don't understand what that is by now. It's it's the same thing over and over and over again. Or if one does it, the other one, like, will jump up and she's like, I'm like, don't look at me. That wasn't me. You know? And then they get a sniff. Normally, I do blame you, but it's not it's not me this time. Our, our first dog was Dalmatian, and a lot of Dalmatians are inherently deaf. Yeah. Um. So she used to scare herself. Oh, no kidding. With the noises that came out of her butt. <laughs> so, like, she'd be in her bed, and, you know, you'd hear something. All of a sudden, she'd hop up, and she'd be like, because she couldn't hear it, but she could feel the vibration. Yep. So she'd be, like, Tony's looking all around, like, what is under my there. ass that just did that? <laughs> and then, of course, now the smell interests. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's, every part of that is gross, but it would be so funny because you'd hear it. And, of course, you know, the, for your first response is like, oh, really? You know, here we go again. Because you know what's coming. It always, you know, is going to hit you in the nose. Yeah. Um, but to see her, like, hop up afraid of what just happened, even though it was her, was, you know, yeah. some people pay money for that. I don't know who. It's, that's kind of weird. But. It's traumatizing. <laughs> it's like when you have a cat. I'm sure, like, you have cats. I'm sure you've done this, Jeff. Don't say you haven't. But you hear that noise. You could be dead asleep at 3 in the morning, and you hear that yakking like they're oh. going to start. Oh. And you jump yeah. up. To, and then you, don't, you just don't want them on the carpet on the bed. And I have so many times I've shoved my cat off the bed or off Anywhere else but here. Yeah, it's I like someone here. yelling fire. You jump up, yeah. and you think that, like, it's the same reaction. You try to get to them fast enough to get them out to where there's no rug. Yeah. Like, go ahead, yeah. throw up right here. Well, you're you good. Yeah. That and meanwhile, right they're looking at you like, what the yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, the best is one night we were, we were sleeping in bed, and a Samson, uh, 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 well, I sleep with a CPAP machine. So by the time I get this thing off, he's like, uh, like all over the bed. I'm like, oh, my God. It's everywhere, you know? And then I, because I, I don't like. Look at Mason's looking offended over there. He's like, yeah. listen, you guys. He's like, when I get home, I'm definitely shitting on your, pill, your pillow. Yeah. He's like, I'm going home with this guy. <laughs> Yeah, but it's true. It, you get to that point where um, you react quick because oh, yeah. you know what's coming, you know. Yeah. And who when they make that face where they're like, <laughs> and you know what's coming out. You're like, no, nope, no. Nope. You're like, please, not on my new comforter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We we have one of those, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, it's a Samsung vacuum, but it's the one that goes on its own. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, a couple of times that yeah. thing is um, picked up <laughs> shit. Refuse, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and jams up and breaks. And you got by, yeah. yeah. You just throw it away because it's like, okay, there's five hundred dollars down the drain. Didn't drag it across the floor, and, you know, streak it everywhere. It's a smear, <laughs> skid mark row over yeah. here. Uh, well, My I, vacuum of skid marks. I'll never forget the day we came home from having breakfast, and there was blood all over the kitchen. Remember that with Samson? Oh yep. Jesus. Looked like a murder scene. Like, I thought somebody broke in, got killed, you know, by something. And we, so we're looking. I mean, there's blood everywhere. And so I call Sean. Sean's like, all right, bow to stern. So I start, can't find nothing. He's like, all right, start looking at butts. So <laughs> yep. Samson was the first one. <laughs> Time for the butt inspection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blood. He, he, so really? he ended up, yeah, so it was like a two-week process where he was losing weight like crazy. We're at the vet almost, remember, like every other day. Yeah. You were, you, you were like pretty much living there. Yeah, and yeah. it was, they thought it was a parasite. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm on the phone with Sean every five minutes, it seemed like, Sean, they think it's this. Sean's like, oh, I don't think it's that. There's no way. So I'm, I'm like, and he's like, all right, let go through the process. You have to start eliminating things. So yep. finally it got to a point where I stormed down there one day. I literally had him in my arms, and I'm like, we are not leaving until this is fixed. So tell me where I got to go, you know, because I don't care how much it costs, you know. And uh, so we finally got to um, had to go down to Boston Road Animal Clinic, which I was not a fan of at the time. And we met Samson's doctor that night, and so she's like, all right, leave him here. 
I'll do the blood panel. We'll get it all together. I think I already know what it is. It's an autoimmune disorder. And I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? So basically he was eating his own body, you know. His body yeah. attacking itself. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, it, it, it costs us about $300 a month just to keep him alive uh, with all his meds and everything that he needs. Mason, it's like dog lupus. Mason's right here basically. with me. He's like, I'm sorry, man. He's like, hey, bud, I, I totally forgot about you for a little while. There's two other guys over there. I wasn't cheating on you. I'm not used to all of this masculinity yeah. and testosterone. So much, so much testosterone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes, you got any peanut yeah. butter? Yeah, she was just picking on my, you know, what's coming out of my butt. He I goes, need some of that you cream. You got any soft music yeah. and some chunky peanut butter? <laughs> so... Yeah. You know, I think people have to, people have just like your, your own, uh, like when my wife had her brain injury, we went to a physiatrist. I don't know if you know what that is. So that's a person who yeah. just deals with the head to the toe, right? They're not a, uh, not a specialist in anything. And I didn't know what that was, but I know I was getting irritated with this dude because it just seemed like we were getting nowhere with her help. So I'm looking at his name tag one day and I take out my phone and I Google physiatrist and I'm like, uh, and I stopped this conversation, like mid conversation. I don't know what he was talking about. I go, so you're not a specialist in strokes or head traumas? He goes, no. I go, what are we doing here? And he took offense to that, but I could care less. And then we, it took a series of events to get to where we are now with her doctor. But uh, I just got to protect his head because there's a metal piece right oh, here. Oh, yeah. He'll, he'll smack his yeah. head. He does yeah. it all day. We don't need any kind of accidents, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but I see the same thing with our dogs. You know, I think people really need to understand like what you need to educate yourself on what you need to spend money on and what you don't. I mean, remember when you called me that yeah. long time ago, I'm like, don't do this, don't do that, but definitely do that because well, even his vet, like I love his vet. Cause his vet was like, you know what he said? He's definitely, this was after you and I spoke. So yeah, he definitely has arthritis in both hips and one knee. He said left hip seems like he has hip dysplasia but don't spend the money on the x-rays. It's the same treatment at his age, regardless. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's, you know, I respected that. Instead of saying, oh, no, let's do some x-rays and see. He's like, it's the same treatment either way. There's no doubt that he has arthritis, so yeah. we're not going to bother doing the x-rays to find out if he has hip dysplasia because right. it's not like you're going to do surgery on him. He's 13 years old. Quick so. question. No. CBD for dogs. I So yep. my cousin... Huge. Yeah, yep. I mean, I know it's huge, but yeah. you know, uh, uh, first-hand experiences. And I've yeah. I've been reading more about that. And my cousin April has a very successful. She better give me props for this because I'm about to throw her out there. Um, cutting edge oils in New Smyrna Beach. She was just voted um, number one in medical marijuana sales in Florida um, yeah. in December, and she just started selling CBD for cats and dogs. And I am looking into it. Yeah, you know, especially for you know the older older animals, you know, with yeah. inflammations like arthritis and, yep. and, and stuff like that. I mean, we've, just you know, for some comfort. Yeah. We've had a lot of luck with dogs with arthritis with it. When it comes to anxiety, it's just like the medicine; it's, it's a fifty miss. fifty yeah. shot. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to arthritis, I mean, we've had we have a dog that when she came to us the through the animal control officer that had her, they said that basically if she has to be put down because of her issues, she had to go in for a necropsy because she was part of an abuse case. Because they needed to count how many times she's had broken bones and things like oh, that. Jesus, um, she's been with us a long time. She's basically a, what we call a permanent foster. Her, she's with her foster mom. Foster mom takes care of her, and that's where she's going to be the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and she's you know she's getting older now, and we put her on CBD, and all of a sudden, man, she's running along like a puppy again. Yeah. So, uh, Sean, I would be curious as far yeah. as uh, like a resource because I know that you know uh, especially in the. Um, you know, animal care market, it, it's a lot less regulated. I mean, because, you know, there's there's a lot of, even in the human CBD yeah. um, part, there it's it's less, it's not as regulated and it's not, it doesn't contain as much, if any at all, um, you know, beneficial cannabis oil properties as it should or as it claims to be. But, you know, with pet supplies being even less regulated, I'd be curious to see where, you, um, where you're getting it from that's reliable. Yeah, um, it, it basically every company I've tried, I always research what they do, where they do their testing. Um, one where we started was it, it do a little do a little shot for these guys was uh, Grateful Paws. Mm -hmm. uh, they're based out of Connecticut. Yep. They get all their materials from the Yukon uh, uh, Cannabis uh, Center, and then they it's tested there. And then each one of their bottles is sent out, you know, batch is sent out to be tested to make sure it's got the full amount of what it's supposed to have in there. Um, 
there's a couple other companies locally that I've been getting stuff that they carry. And I did some research on those companies. I don't remember the names of the brands offhand, um, but they've, they're also, you know, they do the testing to make sure everything's up to snuff. It, it is what it, they yeah, say it is. Yeah. It has the yeah. right amounts in it. It tells you if it's been cut with different oils to, you know, get to the consistency it needs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and that, and making sure it doesn't have the THC in it. Um, yeah. Cause some of them will still have the THC as much it. as my dog might enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in one day, there's a bong sitting there yeah. like whose bong is that? Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Where did you yeah. learn to do this? We do that with Randy all the time. We'll come down here and find watching you. I yeah. watching you. <laughs> like I've never smoked in front of you. What are you talking about? Sometimes I'll come downstairs and Randy has drug paraphernalia. I'm like, dude, where'd you get that? And he, he just looks at me like that blank stare. I don't know. Yeah. So we, most, um, but we'll, we'll drop real quick. A lot of doctors now, a lot of vets are on the CBD um, train, so yeah. they they would have probably a good source too. Yeah, you know, and, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a firm believer in it. I think it does have you know both both humans and animals. You know, I think there's a lot of benefits, but uh, you know, there is a lot of things out there where it's it's there's just places pushing it out, yeah, and it's not yeah. what they say it is yeah. at all. Yeah. So it's you know, and of course. I don't have a way to test it. So it's, it's finding somewhere reputable, um, where you're not know just, there's a place local that, um, is reputable. I personally haven't tried them. I, I have my own CBD chews that I'm getting from my cousin for obvious reasons. She's mm. my cousin and I know, I know her product and I know that she was voted number one in Florida and she sh- will ship it to me. Um, but theory wellness on, No, it's on. No, the- always... th- theory's right across from Andrick. Um, there. Uh, is that Bur- that's not Burnett Road. What is it? New Ludlow Road. That's new. It's Fuller. <coughs> Fuller Road. Fuller that's Road. Fuller Road. Yeah, yeah. theory. Yeah. But do they have pet? I don't know if they well? have yeah. pet supplies, but I do know they're very reputable, and I know a lot of people who yeah, shop yeah. there. And every time I drive by there, the line is around the building. Also, edit out the part about shipping um, things from New Smyrna to the Masters. <laughs> no, don't edit that out because I might get something free for that. Did you? Uh, <laughs> is it? Is it cold at all in here? No, are you guys cold? Yeah, I'm comfortable. <laughs> yeah, are you cold? Are you sure? I'm comfortable. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting a little sensitive <laughs> right now. I'm just saying. Poor Tony over free. there. He's just kind of like off in Never Neverland. Well, he's, like, in, he's in the camera like, angle, so everybody's going to know who he is. Yeah. yeah. So the great he's thing. He's like, of, by the way, I, I don't have hemorrhoids and I'm freezing over here. Yeah. And so if anybody doesn't know, Tony just got out of prison um, this morning. So, you know, this is this is why he's he here today. <laughs> yeah, his new line of ass care products. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's ass care products from when you're asked this doesn't post prison ass care products. Dude, class no, of ninety three really was the last best one. Wasn't he has not been. <laughs> just, isn't it funny though? He's not been in prison. <laughs> <laughs> No, allegedly, I, allegedly, in the last 15 years. allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, he's been, allegedly, he's been in, he's been in Chicopee prison. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's back in Chicopee prison from Syracuse. Back, back in Chicopee prison. Mm. So am I. Cheers. <laughs> How long? How long was it bet- before we graduated till after, I mean, when we graduated till we had our first uh, reunion? It was like 20 years, it was like wasn't 20 it? 20 years. 20 years. At Geraldine's. No, that was, no, that was a, a hooky lot. No, we had like a half ass like, let's go drink at Geraldine's reunion. Yeah. But our first official reunion was 20 years. Yeah, that was the oh, one like that Tig. But can I tell you one thing? Tig had playing that with Terry and Griff. Yep. That was like one of the yep. best nights Tone of my was, life. Yeah. Tony was involved also. Has yeah. Tina not aged since school? Like seriously, right? <laughs> yeah, it has not like, aged. Like I, hat. like I looked like I've been weathered by the sands of Egypt for like the Sphinx. <laughs> the sands of and Egypt. look at her. I mean, it's that was actually a pretty well, clever one. <laughs> that was pretty clever. <laughs> but thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I mean, it's I, I've we had a really good class. We really, we really did. We really did. I I feel like we really did, and I think that that night that that party we had at the Hookie Lao showed that like we just all had such genuine fun. It I mean, yeah. Like we didn't yeah, I don't think I yeah. danced that much. I was sweating my balls off. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you're you're a dancer. I think you had. I think you've danced that much. Yeah. I really don't think I did. <laughs> At one point, I just was like, "I need to sit." Holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> like, we had so much fun. That was the recitals aren't night. this long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, when you're on the side of the stage and you're just pointing, going, "No, you over there." That's different. <laughs> no, that was that was that was a fun night. I feel like we were probably one of the last, the last classes that actually like liked each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, as a whole, yeah, as a whole, yeah. yeah. I, I was class I mean, in '95, even... and trust me, it was an experience. Well, you went to Chicken Town too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yep. forgot about that. That's '95. Yep. I, as far as I know, we have not had a reunion. That or they just forgot I was part of the class. I don't, it <laughs> could have been that too. Um, I wasn't one of the popular kids, so you know. But yeah. 
I I honestly wasn't either. I had a boyfriend all through high school that didn't go to the school, so I didn't. I just was kind of like kind of yeah. cool with everybody. <coughs> Tony, what what position did you play in football? Oh, I was nose guard. Nose guard. So I remember one day. This is a true story. I don't know if you remember this, Tony, but we were out front of the school, and I said, "I want you to tackle me." Do you, Do you remember that? Uh, and I I, I can't. Can you can you hear him by the way? Yeah, I can hear him. Yeah. Um, I came at him pretty hard, and he knocked the shit out of me. Like he took me <laughs> off my feet onto the ground, and I was just like, "Whoa, man!" I didn't mean it. <laughs> he asked you to. It's I asked you to. It was it was it was okay, and you know um, that hurt. But I was I was impressed at the same time. We were still friends. After oh, absolutely. Yeah. No. No. It was it was strictly. Uh, um, what do you call it when I? Uh, was like guy yeah i vol- i volunteered yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I volunteered for that so i knew what i was getting into he was actually in his gear you know so i i, I protected him from <laughs> my flimsy body at the yeah. time <laughs> See, i i definitely missed the uh that fun it, it, we, we really did have a good time yeah, and you know did. that's why i'm hoping this podcast is going to take off to where um people want to come in from high school i think we've had, we've had a, a bunch of people yeah. so far uh, well, I wouldn't say a bunch, but enough. And uh, Rick Rick Harnois reached out to me the other day. Did he? Yeah, he's not going to come on, but um, he had some really nice things to say about the podcast. All right, I'm going to get a hold of him. We nice. got to get him down here. Can I bring yeah. my puppet on the? I don't have a puppet. I was just. Gonna I was going to say, if you got a puppet, you. All right, all right, <laughs> yeah, Mr. No. Rogers. You... <laughs> all right. I just wanted to throw that out there. Well, <laughs> well, don't forget, we we have an opening for next week, so Tony needs to be here. Well, yeah, we already talked about yeah. that. You said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in. So anybody can hang out, you know, for YouTube land out there. If you know us and you want to come hang out, we have plenty of room here. So if you want to come on, hang out, and drink some wine, and I'm s- I'm mad at Meg. Yeah, Megan. Meg blew me off tonight. No, I'm just kidding. She had to work late. <laughs> Meg, oh, uh, Meg uh, Landry. Landry. Yeah, well, yeah. Because yeah, actually, I think we talked <coughs> yeah. about it a couple weeks ago. You said that she yeah. might be on yeah. here. As well. So I mean, we know we're she's, we're, we're going to go to Egger House. Actually, she, we're, you know. Oh, that's on the plan tonight. We can. Okay, let's do it. A drive-by <laughs> egging. <laughs> Imagine that nine one one call. Someone just egged my house. What? <laughs> just a bunch of like eggs just being slapped against the siding. <laughs> I've had that happen while I was driving. Oh, did you? Yeah, I, was, I used to drive truck, and uh, literally, I'm going down the road in a tractor trailer, and next thing you know, five eggs across the windshield. <laughs> oh. Like I couldn't see anything. I I had to screech and halt and go out and kind of scrape the window off. So I, I actually, this is actually funny. I'm going to sound like a super nerd right now. Um, one of the shows I've been watching lately, not even really watching, I just have it on. I just, I have the fire stick now, so I just have it on for noise because I work from home now. But um, Beverly Hills 90210. And they were class <laughs> wow. of 93. Wow. That were class they really? Was, yeah, yeah they, were, they were class of 93. Yeah, yeah, they were class of 93. I mean, of course, they were 40 when they graduated, but. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea legit was like 35 years yeah. old. Yeah. But um, I watch it, and it's just funny because it brings back what you guys have brought up, the egging. And one of the things that they did in, in like, their their sophomore year of high school, David and his best friend, they were, like, hiding in the bushes to egg. And then they all of a sudden realized, like, this isn't cool to do anymore. Like, it was like – but I've been watching that show and going, God, it was good back then. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It was, like – it was fun. Like No cell phones, just, no social media. Right. Yeah. Like, it's it funny because it was, like, they I, argued with each other, like, I haven't heard from you, da, da, da. Where, like, nowadays you're just, like, text me. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the senior-junior egg fight at St. Rose Delima Cemetery? Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> alleged. I mean, in theory, I was going to go. And uh, it was a crazy it was, it was a crazy <laughs> egg fight, man. The cops showed up. They peppered the cruiser with eggs. I'm like, well, I don't want any part of this shit. So, I tried to go out the back. And this guy, I remember, to, I get into You were the, outside. How do you go out the back? Th- there was, so, I used to work there when I was a kid. My father used to be the groundskeeper. So, I knew all the oh, ins oh, and outs oh. of that place. Okay. So, there was a, a dump in the back. So, I, all these trails leaded out to this main road behind it. Was it School Street? It might have been School Street that that went down. I'm not sure. But I, f- I knew where I was going. Pitch black. Boom. Nailed it. Got onto the main road. Some guy pulls up in a truck right next to me. And I was, you know, 16. And he's like, were you just in that egg fight? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was on my way to my friend's house. <laughs> you stay right here. I'm going to go get the cops. I'm like, fuck you. Later. Yeah, stay here. <laughs> okay. So I decide I'm going to think that's ever works. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> So, Do you want me to put my heart here? Is this how it goes? <laughs> so I decide I'm going to run in the woods, which actually went down the hill onto 391. So here I am, a 16-year-old kid trying to navigate through 391, through the pickers and everything, back mm-hmm. to where I think my house is. 
I get home, my clothes are torn apart. I'm sweating like you would not believe, right? Because it's the middle of summer. And my father's like, where were you? I'm like, I was out with friends. Why do you look like that? I was at a neck fight. No, you weren't. I was. You know, he didn't even believe me. He's like, yeah. no, you're not that stupid. I'm like, yeah, I kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. Give me, don't give me that much credit. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the support, but yeah, I'm not dumb. So remember going up and down Memorial Drive. I was just going to bring that up. Cruising the drive was the thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Leaning we did to the it. side with your windows We did open. it all the time. <laughs> of course, I didn't have the coolest vehicle. I had a three-quarter ton Dodge van with lights all over it. thing looked like a UFO. Oh, yeah. It was, like a, it was a, yeah. a dollar vehicle. It had to have a motor put into it. I dropped the motor into it, got it on the road, driving it, and that was my cruise machine. Yeah. If I would have known better, that's what I would have had. Did you, you have like a, a mobber circus like a that mobile. don't laugh your daughter might be in here? <laughs> <laughs> I no, feel like uh, that's mandatory. <laughs> that was one I definitely I didn't put in there. And it was a it was the utility van, so it didn't have all the windows either. So it definitely looked like oh, that so it said free candy on the side. Yeah, yeah. free hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help me get this couch in? <laughs> Yep. I'm not going to lie. I had the Jet Black Firebird Formula 350 that I raced all the time and to like yeah. blew the transmission. I don't, mean oh. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but, you know. With the well, I had a Formula 350. Yeah, yeah, you know that Formula yeah. 350. Yeah. <laughs> I drove my mom's 85 Cavalier, so what you got? Yeah, I'll never forget. It. I had to take my mom's citation out there one day, right? Had the hatchback. Oh, yeah. And I, I was so embarrassed. You know, we see a bunch of these girls. I'm like, God damn it. Have four <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like two the way that thing went, but yeah, you know, that's, that's like two or three more than most motorcycles. Oh God! I'm yeah, sorry, right now the amount of dudes who would be like, "Why are you driving your boyfriend's car?" and I would be like, "Seriously? Like seriously? <laughs> like, let me let me blow your fucking Mustang away right now." The uh, yeah, I did. I used to race <laughs> Mustangs all the time. Yeah. I'm and then surprised. everyone's like, wait, wait, which Mustang? Because there's about 40 of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget Officer O'Grady. He used to pull up next to my car and go, Jeff, you're going home tonight. And I'm like, am I? He's like, yep. Yeah. And he followed me home, watched me park my car. And I just knew I'd like, I'm not even going to mess with this guy. Like, I'm not going to get back in the car. And because he could get me for racing, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But he did that with a bunch of us. He would take us home, follow us home, park your car. You know, he definitely could have uh, written his tickets, got our cars towed, you know, but he was a different kind of cop back then, as yeah. long as you were respectful, you know. Um, but that's when Blondek used to run that drive oh, with that, that 340 yeah. duster. He yep. still got it. Oh, yeah. Does yeah. he really? Oh, yeah. It's it's If you go to the Moose Cruise Nights, uh, you know, I, I frequent that when, when, you know, when they were happening. Still got it. Of course, you know, the, wow. the motor's been, he rebuilds it like every oh, year. Every, yeah. Wait a minute. So we're, we're in the age group now that goes to the Moose? <laughs> go to the cruise nights. I didn't say I was. Okay, a, all right, right. <laughs> I didn't say I was a no. member. That's the next age bracket where you start. Right, you know. I look at the cars. I have a couple of beers and a cheeseburger. <laughs> I'm and not in the moose. Good. All right, I just want to make sure <laughs> that. Again, you're like whoa. Yeah. He's like whoa, whoa. Because I know whoa. exactly what that means when now you're in the moose. Yeah, she just. Uh, I just heard shots fired over here. Yeah. That's what she's doing. No offense to those that go to the moose and are members, I was a but member. I can't, I'm not a member. That's because my boyfriend was bartending there at the time. I was a member. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you yeah. know, James, mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't going to say Wait, that. edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> that There's bastard, a lot of guys named James. Bastard James. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a good dude. Is he? Sorry, oh. James. Sorry, I didn't mean no, to say no, bastard. No. I thought, that's, I th I no, thought that's where just, we were going. So oh, I just, my God. I would no. also say James is a good guy, but I never dated him. No, he's a very good guy. Very good guy. We never had any issues. We just weren't compatible. We were. We were. We should have been friends. <laughs> like there should have shouldn't have went beyond that. That's I said to my wife all the time. I'm like, we friends. should just be yeah. friends. And she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Edit that out. I'm like, oh no, it's staying. I'm, st I'm staying strong tonight <laughs> until I get upstairs. Then it's a whole different ballgame. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I'm really proud of you that you. Uh, we we talk a lot about people that do and people that don't. So people that want to do something, you know, there's, there's that specialness that we finally get to that point where like, you know, we're just going to do it like your mission yeah. and rainbow rescue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Th those things take a lot of, and your podcast and the podcast, yeah. Yeah. leave it out. Um, yeah. you know, so one of the things I, I have a friend of mine, his name is Kenny. He, uh, he definitely gives me a lot of, uh, constructive criticism, which is very helpful. Yeah. So one of the things I was doing, and, and and I knew I was doing it, it's just 
you know, you feel where every guest doesn't really know some things. Like I talk about my dad passing away all the time. I talk about this, and that, and I'm, I'm really sh- trying to curve that back a little bit and be more of having you talk. But it's, it's hard sometimes. Like I feel like sometimes I need to ha- carry on the conversation when I really don't. You know what well, I mean? Well, at the same time, too, your personality is who the show is. Right. And then us with you talking. So knowing your history is part of having that personality that like there. Yeah. Now you're you know? inviting your guests into your world. It's not vice versa. You know, yeah. so it's Yeah, see I think yeah. It, I think it in a different way. You're inviting me into your world. No. It's weird how how you know. Yeah. No, it's it, what is he yeah. doing? He was yawning. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> Oh my bad. He's, <laughs> he he's kinda of done with, he's done with podcasting. Yeah, he's right had now, enough. He's like <laughs> He's looking at his watch. He's like, this is going on way too long. Sound like he just choked on some cat. Yeah, he's like, you know, <laughs> I love the pattern on this rug. It would be, it'd be a shame if something <laughs> happened to it. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. So this pattern on the rug, when my wife had her brain injury, this rug used to really wig her out. I can see that. Yeah, like, she wouldn't come down I here mean, for like the know, longest I'm time. injury free, and it's still kind of wigging me out. But. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this is this is a rug that Chris so Bardo you, picked out. So you're telling me that oh, he's really? not yawning yeah. over here. So Chris did Chris did the rug on the walls. Yeah. Um. So shout out to Bardo and Sons Flooring for all your flooring needs. He does great needs. work. Actually. He does. Yeah. He um. When my brother bought his house in East Long Meadow, he, he bought it kind of half built, and it just so happened that Chris was already contracted to do the floors and oh, stuff wow. like that. So I I ran into Chris um while he was you know working on on it and you know. I'm, I can't, you know, I can't say I can't believe the work that was done because, you know, I do believe, you know, knowing Chris, um, but, you know, my brother couldn't be happier and not that he hired him directly, but yeah. So shout out to Chris. He does, yeah. he does great work. Yeah. He's a good dude. We've had some great times, especially when we were young. Like Chris's house was like the hangout spot. So it was, I hung out there myself. Yeah. You remember those days? I remember those days. I remember his dad. You guys dad. were like that luck. crew that everyone time. knew of. We, you, we, was you, Chris, who else was it? Uh, me, Chris, Carl, Matt. Um, Jeremy, um, yeah, that was the crew right there. We yeah. were the, we used yeah. to call ourselves the unit, which was pretty funny, <laughs> you know, and it, we literally were, there was where there was one, the others were not. I mean, far. it was a small unit, <laughs> but <laughs> 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 well, they say it's not the size of the unit. It's the fun that you got. <laughs> we were definitely good examples of that, you know? Oh, God. Yeah. We were always together. We were always, yeah. I, I remember Chris's dad sat us down one day and he's like, listen, guys. I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm, I'm going camping about a camper, about a seasonal campsite. And he's like, I know you guys don't want to go. I'm not going to force you to go. So here's what's going to happen. I'm giving you a gift. <laughs> You're going to, you can spend the whole weekend here. But when I come home on Monday, this house better be spotless, nothing broken. And you know, so we're like, okay. And that was it. It was like, it was a very sacred. Um, what's he doing now? Oh, he's just licking things. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking at his butt. Yeah. I t- I'm telling you, I have that nervous. Tr- when I hear that sound, I'm like, <laughs> like it's coming. <laughs> just said, let well, him. You won't express. Just let him throw up. Me, I, so. I, I've thrown up in here a million times. Let him rock. <laughs> <laughs> I have Scotch Guard on the the rug for a reason. Um. So yeah, it was it was uh it was funny how a Friday after school, I packed my stuff. Well, I only lived next street over, so it wasn't really a big deal. And uh, we were off to Chris's house and. Uh, the uh, fuckery that would go on <laughs> would, was, uh, you know, but we were actually pretty, pretty respectful. For, I was for just going to say, part. I've never known you guys to be, you were on the wilder side. Yeah. But it was never in an outrageously disrespectful, like it was never like that. It was just, yeah, just we knew how to have fun. We did. We <laughs> laughed all the time. We yeah. laughed all. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was great hearing the stories about the wall and the pit and yeah. all that kind of stuff, you know? Me having Justin's mom on my shoulder trying to get her out of the woods because she couldn't walk out. Let's talk about the impromptu parties at Cody's house. Oh, God. Cody. Like, oh, we don't have Jeremy, anywhere. Cody. Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. Like, oh, we don't have anywhere to go. Let's go to, like, we weren't even invited. He wasn't even going to have a party. We just showed up. <laughs> He's like sleeping. He's and his like, mom oh. and dad were so cool about yeah. it. They, they his mom would just back. leave. Yeah. She's like, okay. Yeah, all right. I'll oh, be back seriously? later. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yep. They're like, oh, we don't know where we're going to party. We're just going to go to Cody's house. Yeah. That's great. I think one time we went there and he, no one was home and we just let ourselves in. Yeah. And <laughs> then he showed up later. He's like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it was uh sorry, Sean, that we're reminiscing it's here. You're caught in the middle of this and I, I, I apologize. <laughs> the worst part, he's, the worst he's, part he's is I have alum, you know? probably a hundred stories just like it with my friends. It's all the same, you know? 
and actually my family too our when i get with my cousins it gets a little crazy sometimes yeah yeah it you know we're we're irish it's <laughs> we drink <laughs> <laughs> we things get a little also, crazy we're the last couple of generations before all this talk, technology shit the one one of the biggest things that used to bother me in the bar scene was working in the bar that i that i worked in cuz it was a lot of younger people great kids don't get me wrong going out in groups of 10 and they're all like this. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. None of them talking Not to even each, each other. other. There's been so many times where I've taken um, like one of the beer buckets, the Bud Light buckets and put it on the bar and been like, put your shit in there and talk to each other. Like I remember there yeah. was this one night I was working in the whole bar. All of them had Phones their faces in their phones. And I'm like, none of you are talking to each other. Like It's, it's crazy. Like it's, I feel like we're, the f- last of the few generations that didn't have that that crutch, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's yeah. it's just crazy because these kids don't know what they're missing. They have yeah. no idea what they're missing. Yeah. We were lucky if he had a beeper that could go, okay, somebody's calling me. <laughs> a even, beeper. They, they're writing <laughs> boobs my, in there. Yeah. Wait, does this, does this say boobs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your friend would constantly do that all day yeah. long. Yeah. Like, yeah. like okay. don't they know this cost me 10 cents? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time you write me boobs, it costs me 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Plus my nineteen ninety nine a month. I remember when that when the cell phones first came out. First of all, they were like ginormous. Yeah. But it was like, why? Are, if it's not an emergency, don't call me. It's like three dollars a minute. <laughs> I had one. I, I had the original back phone. I, I worked yeah. for Leechmere at the time. Yeah. It was a dollar oh a minute. God, or maybe, no, it could have been a dollar ninety nine a minute. I think yeah, it might have been. Yeah. yeah, right. It was something crazy. Plus like fifty bucks a month. But, yeah, just yeah. to have it. Yeah. And we got it because my son's mother was pregnant, and I was working overnight, and so I had the beeper and the phone. And yeah, <laughs> so, it's like a regular Zach Morris over here. I'll never forget. I got pulled over right in front of Gino's Auto Body Shop because I, I lived right there. So I came around the corner and I might have blown the red light. I don't know what I did, but he pulls me over, and I had the bag phone sitting right there. So he shines his light. And he goes, "What do you have a bag phone for?" And I could afford it. I, you know, I didn't have any bills really. So I told him, I said, oh, "My son's mother's pregnant," and he, and next thing, you know my beeper goes off. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, shit. Was that it? Was that the was that no, the night? No, no, no. Oh. Um, but he thought I was doing drugs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the next thing I know, I'm out of my car. He's searching the car. And I didn't know anybody. I didn't know my rights back then. I'm mm. like, fine. Go this, you, know, you want. We already had the car seat in there already because yeah. we were like days away. It was, that, it was that close. And, of course, he didn't find anything. But he was grilling my ass. So yeah, finally. nobody had a bag phone unless you were dealing drugs or yeah, you were Gordon yeah. and I had the yeah. thick gold chain out you know like oh yeah yeah absolutely. so I, I was definitely not helping my cause one yeah. bit so <laughs> look I got it at least mirror dude I got a discount <laughs> yeah look look she was that. on layaway for a month and a, or for a year and a half <laughs> you know how much these Oakley's cost me to brand on the side that's right <laughs> you just want to see my laser disc at home whoa that almost sucked that, that almost sucked <laughs> yeah for me okay, we're, yeah we're gonna put that over there for now <laughs> see that's why I drink out of this glass and not a, yeah. if that was a wine glass it would have been ugly that's right. So let's say, because this has always been a, uh, a subject of uh, conversation. Let's say my friend Randy here, looking as dapper as he is, goes to a bar and he finds the bartender attractive. How does he go about asking her out? No. Is there doesn't. any rules? He doesn't because he's a pedophile. Look at him. Well, I mean, let's, <laughs> right, let's assume Randy's a normal guy, hasn't been stabbed. Randy goes, <laughs> stabbed. Randy goes I heard that. <laughs> and he's got eyes and limbs. Okay, let's just... <laughs> Well, here, when Randy stares off into space, this is all you hear. Or, hold on. That's, that's, that's Randy's. Uh, I got to get better with this thing because this thing w- would be hours well, right. of you, fun. You can do sound effects and stuff with that, right? Yeah. yeah. So I've noticed that um, I can actually do it using my cell phone. I can capture the sound, make it into a wave file, and send it to my computer, and then transfer it to there. It's a little bit of a process, but yeah. um, Randy's going to Randy's gonna come to life. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. So... So we need someone who does like voices to do yes. sound bites for Randy. Yeah. So oh, I don't know if I want him to sound like Christopher Walken or. Oh my God! You want to talk about laughing? You know who Marty Caproni is? No. Oh, he's yeah, a Marty Caproni or, or he... Steve Vecarelli. They're both Steve Vecarelli. Yes. Oh Vecarelli my God. Vecarelli would be good. Oh, if you got both of them on here, I want in on that day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so here's Vecarelli's a Chickabee native. Is Marty as well? Or, I think he is, but he, I mean, he's done, he's done stand up with some of the best out there. Yeah. Um, really? And they, and they, oh, God, they were really that. big in promoting stand up with like within Chickabee and the surrounding areas. Yeah. They, they'd actually, they'd so do great. you know them personally? I do. Yeah. He's yeah. Like, Marty's done stand up with the, one of the Wayans brothers even. Oh yeah. No yeah. Marty's mo- he's yeah, hilarious. He's done a lot of stuff. He's, but and, Steve, and is, Steve has, and Steve is funny as out there. Yeah. So you're, you're challenged now. 
I'll get them in here. Yep. I'll... So you've been knighted. Hang on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> right live on. I told, like, Marty's a good friend of mine. He's a good dude. And he's, oh, my God. They, As long as I'm in on that night, <laughs> I'm good. You're going to need more bottles than that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they're hilarious. Brett will, Brett will be the man. He'll bring it. He's I'll not bring scared. The <laughs> yeah. And they're two of the most, probably, I'd say, supportive of local small business and people doing their own thing. Yeah, and just they, like, they did. They're they're good guys. Pre-COVID, huge, yeah. huge push. I mean, to, like, we have drive, an opening as, fr- as close as chicken. next on Monday. So I literally, I don't, I don't know Steve. I mean, I know Steve, but I don't have. I don't I'm know personally. Like I know him because of what he's done, and yeah. I know him through Sorry, through people. <laughs> but I could probably reach out to him, you know, one way or the other. I'll reach out to to Marty. Like and Marty said, certainly could. Marty it. knows Steve. Oh well. my God, he would do it in a heartbeat. He's, yeah, he's tell him he wants to come like on that. a shit show. Here we are. <laughs> so he did when I met Marty. This is actually a really funny story. So um, my sister was turning forty. It was her 40th birthday party, and I was planning a surprise party at her house. And um, Marty had come into TD's, and he was talking with Tom about something that they were working on together. Tom's the owner, obviously, of TD's. And we got into some conversation, and I learned that he was a comedian. I wanted someone to roast my sister for her 40th. Oh, boy. And, oh, this gets better. This how did, is hilarious. How did she take that? <laughs> no, how, how this came about was, so when he learned who I was, he was like, wait a minute. He was like, is your sister Tammy? And I'm like, yeah, my sister's Tammy. He was like, you have got to be kidding me. He said, there was, remember back in the day in high school when you partied in the woods, there were partying in the woods behind the cemetery um, in Springfield by the Rotary, yep. by Bay State. And um, the cops broke it up and everyone just scattered their own ways. And he, him and his buddies were in the bushes and my sister was just running. He grabbed my sister covered her mouth and pulled her in the bushes and she's freaking out long story short they ended up in the bushes together hiding from the cops with their buddies just talking and shooting the shit and he found out that that's who my sister was turning 40 and he was like oh it's on it was the best roasting because she didn't remember him oh so yeah. but he already had that he already had that story <laughs> yeah, so he yeah. led with that story and it was it was like per the time it couldn't have been more perfect and that's how marty and i connected and it was like it was just hilarious when she ever just but he relived that story to my entire family in front of everybody. And she just was like, oh, my God. Like, it was just hilarious. But, yeah, that's how I met Marty. And he was, he's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Oh, my wow. God, he's hilarious. So, yeah, I will totally reach out to him. I love I, it. I guarantee you he would do it in a heartbeat. Awesome. You know, the, 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 I'm so humbled because the amount of people that have come to help – you know, it's just it's been yeah. insane. I, I never thought I would get this much help. Yeah. I thought I'd be, you know – I'd go six weeks because there was a point in time I was telling Brett, I went five weeks. I couldn't find anybody. Well, actually I did find somebody, but for five weeks I got blew off every Monday. Yeah. So, you know, it takes a while to set this up and get everything right in the sound, you know, and I'd be all excited. And then f- literally 15 minutes before they're supposed to be here, I can't make it. Oh. Or you said even just like complete ghosting. Like, ghosting. Yeah. That yeah. was another one. Like I'll be there. And then it's like, Oh, never. Well, there was how me. many times did you and I schedule with, you know, me, Meg, and Griff, and like, and was like, like three or four, I think this is like this the is fourth the thir- time. This is the third time. Third I, yeah, because yeah. I had thought I had COVID once um, while I was in a car with somebody that had COVID, so I didn't want to get anybody sick. Yeah. Well, that was twice. I think I had COVID twice. Oh, okay. And then the third one was our snowstorm. Yep. And then, so we're here today. But, you know, thank God we were able to. Yeah. Um, because would, I was so excited. It's all I could think about today at work. Yeah. That would have been a fun ride in the snowstorm to come down. You, I would have been just sleeping here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, was, I was ready room. to come. I understood when you when you rescheduled, but I was I was ready. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I had figured that was coming. I was yeah. like, all right, he's it's gonna. Like. Yeah. So I mean, I want to uh, I want to expand this a little bit, and then add another table on, because Brett has been a phenomenal person to be uh, our you. sidekick, and so. I really want to when when Matt comes back because he'll he'll be back in a couple months. I really want to expand this so we're all here. Just imagine like I, the the let's so the vibe we got going right now. Like Tony's been a great guest today too. Having him here, you know, I haven't I haven't I haven't, I haven't <laughs> seen like, him. I'm, I'm over here. I haven't seen him <laughs> since the uh, the reunion. Cold. One of the reunions, yeah. I'm cold. Yeah. I need my preparation. Aid. And then Sean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Sean, me and Sean have been really close friends for years. Yeah. Um, for nine years or eight years at least. Well, yeah. Nine years because we, we yeah, started going f- on. before that. Yeah. So you know, and then Christ, we've been friends for God since we were little Peaceful. kids. Yeah. I remember. Um, so I had a little crush on your sister for a little while. Everyone did. <laughs> I was in French class, but I think she hated me, right? Because she wouldn't no. give me the time of day. No, but she was the cheerleader, and yeah. I was like the, the 
the chick who was always getting thrown out of school. Yeah. <laughs> Tina's like, thanks. Yeah, and my sister. Yeah, we're bring in, her over again. We're it's in great. French class, and I remember trying to impress her with all my swear words for French, and she just wasn't having it. Yeah, that sounds like her. And I'm like, how do you not find that funny? Like, yeah. you know, I remember, I, I don't know why, like, just like, like Tourette's, the teacher was getting pissed at me for something, and she said, you need to say something in French, and I said something very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher just looked at me and she's like, I don't know whether I should be proud of you because that's the best French I've ever heard out of you since you started or I should be sending you to the principal's office. Yeah. And I don't want to say what I said, but it was something I definitely should I don't want to know what you said. No. Like, oh, um, Especially okay, to my sister. Sister. And I remember sitting next to your sister. I'm like, so what's up? You like? And she's like, you're such an asshole. Like, why would you say that? And I'm like, I thought that was the funniest thing I've ever said. But, it, you know, of course, I live in my own head. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to know what you said, but I don't. I'll, I'll tell you after it was. Yeah, uh, tell me later. Yeah, you probably never want to talk to me again, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but, but yeah. So but the, Tina did avoid the question about which one. Uh, well, you know, oh, they the want to pick up the bartender. Oh, that's right. So yeah, mm-hmm. how do oh. we pick up a bartender? Because this is also an educational platform. Mm-hmm. So I think step one is don't try to pick up the bartender. I was just going to say <laughs> the majority of bartenders don't want to be picked up. Really, they, it's their they, job. When you go, when fair. you go to work for what you do, how often are you just like, oh yeah, I hope someone like tries I, to pick me up. So I feel like I'm a piece of meat when I go to work sometimes. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm like, well, listen, I mean, that's obvious. I have a brain. It's not just this Mac. You know, this. I'm gonna tell you right now, any classy, respectful, respectable. Um, Bartender, female. Obviously, I'm talking about female. I thought you were talking about like um, us. I'm like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that rules me out too. <laughs> Respectable. After that, I'm done. But they don't. I mean, I my my current boyfriend. I met, you know, in the bar. Like he was one of he was one of the regulars. See, one, how did he do it? He's one of the best guys I know. Uh, was it time? Like, was it was it a like a? He he's in the navy, and um, he was stationed at Westover, and he was he started hanging out at TDs. I was bartending one night. He became a regular friend of everybody's. Um, we started dating, <laughs> and we've been together ever since. That was three years ago. But um, is he still in the Navy now? He is. Yeah, he actually lives in North Carolina right now. He no, was, so does he yeah. know that Westover is an Air Force base and there's no boats there? He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't on Westover. He he's a ch- he's a ch- the chief recruiter. So he was stationed off of. Yeah. I shouldn't say he was here at Westover because he wasn't, but he was stationed here. Yeah. In western mass for recruiting but um it's funny because he's probably the only and he didn't he didn't try to pick me up it was kind of like my friend set us up but um bartenders fellow bartenders and I used to talk about all the time like we appreciate compliments and we appreciate the effort but at the same time we're just like don't if you you treat the bartender like a piece of meat it's just not it's not kosher (laughs) like just because they're bartending doesn't mean they want 25 guys coming in that night trying to pick them up befriend them like you know what one of the things I I used to say to people is um my favorite customers used to be the ones that I could have real conversation with not the ones who want to know what I did for a living yeah um (sighs) is this all you do is bartend um because that was used to be one of the things I I would want to hit someone and be like oh so you're a bartender that's all you do like really you guys made a good living some bartenders I'm gonna tell you right now I wish I still did it yeah Cause the money is ridiculous. Yep. Um, but have conversations about life. Like that's how you're going to connect with a bartender who you might be attracted to. Like, don't just talk to them about, Oh, those jeans look good on you. <laughs> like, I mean, don't, come yeah, on. And if they're being friendly, <laughs> like, hold on, let me write that in down. The customer <laughs> service industry. <laughs> yeah. It's their job to you're be right. friendly. You are right. correct. Yeah. It affects your pay. If you're yeah. not, you are, they're not hitting on you. You yeah. are correct. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks Brett. <laughs> just you ruined everything. But I will yeah. tell you, I will tell you, Bartenders are some of some of the very rare people out there who you you can have a genuine conversation with. And they've heard it all. Well, I've had the best conversations with yeah. bartenders, you know. But it's not only that they're they're gonna if it's if they're truly like good people, they're gonna everything you say to them stays between you and them. They're not running their mouth mm-hmm. about everything that you say unless you say you're gonna murder somebody. You know what I mean? So, and, like, even so if, and even if they do, so you're like their my mouth, attorney. It's just someone who doesn't yeah. know you because yeah. it's a guy who showed up a couple days later. You're never gonna believe this asshole told me the other day. <laughs> right. Like yeah. you don't know him, but you know. Well, you it's, remember remember Johnny at the Hukilau, the bartender Johnny? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he is solely responsible for me and my wife getting together. So I was uh and I told this in another oh, podcast, but is, I he wasn't, or, is he laying down? What's he doing? He's actually looking at the door. Oh, he might but have to go to the bathroom again. 
No, he, yeah, he does that. He's okay. Yeah. Calm down, mom. Calm down. I said the, the old man fog. He's yeah. like, where am I yeah, again? Just, yeah. Oh, hang on. Yeah, he bumps yeah. into a wall and he comes back. He's good. <laughs> I think he's trying to show you the door, so that might yeah. be. A <laughs> so yeah, when uh, when I met my wife, I used to work with her. She was my boss, and uh, so we used to go to the hooky lot every Wednesday. I mean, we were there every Wednesday religiously, but we went there like I lived down the street, so we we're always there. But and uh, I remember Johnny pouring her a drink one day, and he gave me the wink. I'm like, did you just roofie her, Johnny? Like, because we're not supposed to do that, you know. <laughs> I'm interested in her, but not that way. Like, I don't want to go yes. to jail. And uh, so he would definitely make her some stiff drinks. And uh, you know, I kept, I, I'm like, I need her really drunk because I need to look really good, you know. And uh, yeah, that was the night. It was, that's how we started to get to know each other was going to the bar, because when she was at work, like she was very together, you know. And I'm, I used to make fun of her, like I used to walk behind her. She used to have this little clip. Uh, there's no pad. I used to go behind her and go, making fun of her. <laughs> and uh, all the guys in his store wanted her, and they always talked like they were dating her. Well, come to find out nobody was, you know. And uh, one night she decided to do a little white lie that all her friends gaffed at her. So she wanted some. She wanted to go out to the trumpets. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll go out. Well, she came into the club with her hair done, her nails done. Trumpets was, that's the one across from Denny's, right? Mm -hmm. Or was, yeah. Yep, that's where all the people who just recently got divorced Yes, <laughs> and yeah, we're and going they haven't on yet graduated to Geraldine's or. Um, uh, and for the Maybe. audience, the people who don't know, uh, Trumpets was a hotel, so you know you you had rooms available well, there you if have that it. was your thing. Yeah. And uh, so she comes in with I can tell you what she was wearing that night, like to the T. But her hair was done, her nails were done, like she was like, and I'm like, what? And <laughs> that was it. I was I was hooked. Game over. But Johnny was the one that was uh, kind of stoking that fire for a little while and, and getting us to talk to each other. And because you know, I was there with a bunch of guys and her, and then all of a sudden, you know, after a couple of drinks, we'd loosen up a little bit. And then the, I would turn away from the guys and start talking to her, you know, and that's mm -hmm. how the conversation started getting um, better and better and better. So it was uh so shout out to Johnny. Nice. Shout out to our nice. bartenders. I don't have a romantic love story like that, but you know, my, my drinking years began at the Bridge Cafe. R.I.P. I forgot about oh, that shit. place. That, place um, was, that yeah. was a good place. So uh, we used to, uh, uh, Dan Martino and I, and then you know Tony and, and you know a bunch of others got added in. But there was a bartender. There was a bartender there uh, who went by the name of T.D. No relation to T.D.'s bar, <laughs> but his real name is Huey, um, and. Fantastic guy, you know, yeah. you know, a uh, bunch of years older than us. Um, but, you know, he's been invited to most of our weddings. Oh, wow. Um, he, you know, since T, uh, since uh, Bridge Cafe closed, he now we're, he's a bartender at, uh, or was, I don't know what's going on with that place, after, you know, during COVID, but at the KFC on Granby Road. But uh, just, you know, salt of the earth guy, like one of those people, like you just, you kind of opened up to, you know, that, that typical like bartender story where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to pour my heart out to this guy. And like, he knows me or us and a lot, of, a lot of, you know, my friends and I better than, um, you know, a lot of people. Right. And, you know, I mean, we've been, uh, I've been to his 50th birthday party, you know, like his 25th wedding anniversary. Like, you know, I get invited to all these things and, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to, you know, this thing. Oh, how do you know that guy? Well, he's my bartender. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like my barber like i have yeah. i have I mean, the crazy thing is i i used to tell people all the time if if you if you don't trust your bartender you need to go to another bar yeah like literally like you can't like some of my closest friends are people who i met bartending right like they just yeah. they come in and and you know i mean not that you want to promote people going through things and drinking. Mm. I mean, we've all been there at one point or another, especially at our age. We've, we've been down our roads or we just, yeah, you know. He's seen me at my worst yeah. and at my best. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. I, I, some of my worst times were, were in the bars. and But some of the best people I've met were in those bars because you're at your rawest point. You're, you're going through something and you can't, you don't know where to go. So you, you grab the bottle, you grab the shots and. That's where you meet some of the realest people. And it's yeah. like, and those bartenders, I I take pride in knowing that some of the best people I know were people who worked for me at those bars. And some of the best people I'm still connected with are people who worked for me. And I don't even like saying for me. It's more like with me. Mm. Like they worked with me. Um, they're just good people. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like they, they cared about the people who came in that place. And you could tell. 
And you could tell because it wasn't just about them making money. It wasn't just about, and that's what it should be. That's what the bar scene should be. Like your bartender should get to know you as a person and understand your needs as that person. And you know what? You might need to go in there that night and get fucked up because of something mm-hmm. that happened. But you know what? That bartender is responsible for getting you home safely. And there's, you know, like some of the best people I know are from the bar scene. It really, yeah. it's it's crazy. Yeah. And some of the best stories, like how people connected, happened yeah. that way. I tell people all the time, get off of the dating sites. Cut it out. Rely on the people who know you to set you up with somebody. Like you're not going to find somebody on these on Zeus. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. My, my friends used to set me up with some really weird people. Yeah. There, was, there, was, there was plenty of times when I went in there and, you know, it was evident that I was not, you know, I was having a bad night and my drinks might have been a little stronger. And then there was other times mm-hmm. where I was, you know, uh, cursing them out because I thought I might have been watered down and it might have been for my best benefit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, uh, you know, a great person nonetheless. So, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a lot of great friendships to be made, you know, with with the bartender. They're, they're people. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're great people and they deal with a lot of shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd think retail is bad. You know, <laughs> both have talked about that a bunch of times. Yeah. I thank God every day that I worked in retail, no offense, Tina, than that I was not a bartender as much yeah. fun as no, sometimes no it seems. Taken. Yeah. It is not, you know, an enjoyable thing. A lot. I of mean, times. the fun times outweigh the bad yeah. by a, a long shot, but the bad can be really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So like, yeah. Yeah. So you're a Guinness guy. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Guinness and, you know, Jameson. I've got a couple of different whiskeys that I do like, but Guinness is my big one. I've always, like, yep. w- when I drank, I-, I wanted to get behind Guinness. And I it's it, I feel so, f- like, it's a dinner for me. <laughs> you oh, know what I, I mean? I love it. it doing a car bombs. Oh. oh, my God. We used to do car bombs. And, I mean, once again, I, I hang out with my family more than, like, cousins more than I had a lot of friends. And, like, we would go to a bar. It would be the group of us. And we all had what we call the O'Brien build, just big. So we'd come into the bar. Most of the bars that we went to, we knew the bartender there, so it would always be a good time. We were actually we were at one place, and we had a couple other people that you know knew us that were with us, and somebody started a fight. All of a sudden, you see seven people, all O'Briens, stand up, and the stop the fight stopped. <laughs> yeah, because they were messing with one of our, and that's how our family always was. It's like. You know, oh, get into it. It's, you know, we're at the bar. Let's get into it. And not that that's always the best thing, but. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Like having each other's back. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. And that's one of the best yeah. feelings about having your own little spot is you become part of that family. And there's, you know, I mean, I, being in the position I was in for as long as I was, I was judged by a lot of people. My family, my closest friends, they <sighs> judged me for what I did for work. But I'm going to tell you right now, those people were the core of my life during the toughest times of my life. They yeah. really were. Yeah. And they were yeah. the first ones to have my back in a, in a bind. hundred yeah. percent. So many times. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times where my, my closest family and friends hid under a rock. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah. so, I mean, I don't, I don't regret yeah. those. T- I don't miss it. <laughs> I don't miss it. But <laughs> I might miss it sometimes, but it's, you know, I, I like having the consistency back in my life schedule yeah. wise and, yeah. you know, paycheck wise and like all that. But, you know, I, I, I miss those people. They were, you know, I keep in touch with a lot of them and a lot of them, are, you know, occasionally will text me and be like, how are you? And it makes you remember like times like you were, you were saying, like, like those are the people who are going to have your back when yep. you are at your worst. They're yeah. going to have your back because they've been there yep. and right. they get yeah. it. So family isn't always blood. Nope. No, no. that is for damn sure. Yeah. yeah. No, it yep. is not. I mean, some, yeah. some people that I would have never in a million years thought would have left my side. Um, when I was at my lowest point, just disappeared. And you get this whole new, you get this whole new crew of people. And it's like, wow, okay. So this is what, this is what revolution is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm very thankful that you started it. It, it And it takes a set of guts to say, I'm going to start something from scratch. And so hopefully today, so we're, we're the, the purpose, and we got off track, but it was hilarious. I, yeah, that was, it, it definitely that, was. That was awesome. This is this is what I love about the podcast. It goes in this crazy... Um, One word sets you off in a whole yeah, different direction. Oh, so much, <laughs> it's so funny. And I, I you know, I actually watch yeah. these from beginning to end again after they're done, and I crack up laughing because it's... It, I like Not that I like to hear myself, but yeah, I like to hear the, the banter back and forth, and I think it's really fun. But, um, you know, there's something to be said about people that, like I said, that, that do, and... Um, it's not easy. There's a lot of, when I tell my customers what I do for work is I, I say, you have to be uncomfortable or to be comfortable, you have to be uncomfortable. 
So, you know, there's that growing pains and you're, you're going through that now. Yeah. So hopefully, and I'm going to send this out to the, the YouTube world that we're going to have some links below uh, for both. So if you can do what you can to help out, donations are always welcomed and they help. You have no idea how much they help. Yeah. Um, even if it's five bucks, if it's a dollar, if it's food, if it's blankets, you know, whatever that is. So visit our sites, um, see what they need. And if anybody can help out, please, uh, you know, eventually when I start making some money off this, um, that's where some of my proceeds are going to go to to help everybody nice. out. So um, hopefully, you know, one of these days I'll be the next Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, I don't want to work a real job anymore. <laughs> it's those growing pains. It, it happens in rescue. It happens in doing those podcasts. Um, when we started, I, I mean, when I was young, I was that kid that, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends. I was quiet. I, you know, I was a short, fat kid. I didn't, you know, so it took a lot for me to come out of my shell. And then you start a business. I've, I've done, you know, work different businesses, starting the rescue. Doing a rescue is a business and you have to force yourself to interact and talk to people and really start to learn to read people to make sure they're, you know, that's one of the best things is you get people talking and all of a sudden they'll start coming out with the stories that really tell you how their household is and what's going on. And then you can learn, okay, this is going to be the right fit for you guys. This one isn't. You know, yeah, um, and that took a lot, you know, and now like Kathy, you know, has been with us a long time too. And she's yeah. like, Tron, you should be a salesman at this point because Shout you, out you to know, Kathy. you've learned to be a salesman. You know, that's basically what you have to do. You have to sell yourself and your services that people trust you that you're doing the right thing for them. Right. Yep. The thing, the thing that's like, I think the hardest for me is, um, my two biggest passions in life have always been animals and dance, um, gymnastics, um, and I tell you, like, I I just said this to someone the other day. I said, what, the, the things I'm best at don't make any money. <laughs> like, why is that? Like, why is that? I remember uh, when I moved to Florida, I moved to teach full time. And I was so excited about it. I actually taught for the Zombie Bride and the Michael Jackson's Thriller video. Cheryl oh, Sinkin. wow. Yeah. yeah, she opened a dance studio in Fort Myers, Florida. And I, cont- I, I don't even remember how I connected with her somehow on social media. And she was looking for someone. And I moved there. I was so excited. But the money just, I couldn't, I'm like, why are the things I'm so passionate about? I just can't survive on. <laughs> like, and like with animal rescue, you can't, there's, yeah. there, you don't, yeah, you can't. Get rich. Yeah, no, there's, <laughs> yeah. you can't, you can't no. even pay your rent. Never mind, get rich. <laughs> yeah. like, no, no, nobody sorry. in our group takes, has a paycheck. There's no paycheck at all. It's all it's, volunteer. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, I'm like, it's one of the most fulfilling things. Like it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's, but if you love what you do, do you need to yeah. ma- make more than you just enough you to definitely survive? Don't. You definitely yeah. don't. But it, the thing that's, that stinks about it is with doing rescue or teaching and coaching. Um, and that's not, I mean, not just, not just in dance or gymnastics, but, you know, in different, in different fields of coaching that, you know, people do out of passion, it's just, it's not enough to pay the bills. Mm. And so you have to work full time, which is what causes burnout. And yeah. when it comes to that point where you have to give one up, what are you going to give up? Are you going to give up the passion or are you going to give up the thing that's putting food on your table? You yeah. know, like that's where that's where the struggle comes in. So, um, you know, I'm happy that I'm in a, a headspace right now where I'm smart enough to know the difference and know how much I can invest and in where before it was like, I want it all in, all right, in, right. all in, yeah. all in. Yeah. And the next thing you know, yeah. you're like, Oh my God, all I can afford is macaroni and cheese from the dollar store. Yeah. <laughs> like, like well, so <laughs> I'm going to make an announcement. I'm going to, I'm going to start a new project. This is no one's ever, well, my wife's heard this before. Um, <clears throat> but with COVID, you know, there's been a certain population that's been affected by this. And so I am going to start uh, a new rescue for uh, homeless strippers. <laughs> and we're, we're going to, listen, you're I got foster, this worked out. I got this all worked out. <laughs> yeah. We're going to foster them until we can get them rehomed. Yeah. And That's then put where them. came from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's going to position him next to one of the foster poles. Yep. So I did not have my wife's uh, permission to do this just yet, but I'm working on it. But I think it's a great idea because there's, you know, how many. <laughs> So we're going to make our own commercial using that same song that, I don't, we, that I don't, we see. I don't want in on that one. <laughs> hey, it was, listen, it was a good idea on paper. Okay, I'm just saying. All right, so we are at two hours and 12 minutes already, if you can believe oh, that. Jesus. Yeah, wow. crazy, right? Wow. So go ahead and plug your rescue one more time. Mason's mission. And what's your goal? What, do, what's, what does it do? And what do you um, want to see happen? Our biggest goal right now is to raise money for local animal rescues and spread awareness of animal cruelty and animal rights. 
Perfect. And thank you. Oh, Who did that? No, no, no. You got to take it off because I'll, ha- I'll have to. I- I'll oh, get in trouble. Right. Yeah, I'll get in trouble. Right. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Damn you. That was hilarious, though. Um, <laughs> wow. That so was, you only got a couple seconds. So you're was, I was like, yeah. I literally was like, how did you do that? That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> perfect time. Yeah. yeah. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to discredit what you were saying. She started crying, like that tear came right yeah. off. She's like, what? It's it, what's here? Yeah. It's on the side. I can't see it. You just threw me under the bus. <laughs> so thank you for having enough guts to start these, this project. And you know, I've always thought very highly of you. And I'm, thank, you. thank you very much. I'm very humble that you wanted to come on today. Absolutely. And support the, support the podcast. And we'll definitely have you on again. Um, you're free and clear to be in the jump seat anytime. Absolutely. Um, and Sean, you know, go ahead with the Rainbow Rescue. Definitely rainbowrescues.org. Uh, um, you know, we're always looking for volunteers, donations, et cetera. Uh, we're, you know, making a difference one dog at a time, you know, best doing the best we can. Yep. Uh, and honestly, it's been great having you with us. That's been like, yeah, I consider you part of the family. You know, you're fa- you're not just a volunteer for us. You're not just the guy with the podcast. You're a part of the family at this point. I appreciate it. Um, you're not just that guy with the hemorrhoid cream. Yeah. I'm going to give you the yeah. 20 bucks I owe you later. <laughs> 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 yeah. Get it. I got to get the plugs in now so I can yeah. get the cash back. <laughs> you're not just a friend of the yeah. rainbow. You're yeah. rainbow family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just part of it now. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Uh, God damn. <laughs> Brett, you're killing me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, Brett, uh, well, just yeah. one, one more big one, though, is uh, before COVID hit, we were planning a major event. We had a park. Um, rented. Uh, we were going to rent Dufresne's Park and have a big giant event. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had vendors ready. We were going to have music. We were going to have food, the whole works. Um, COVID obviously put a stop to that, but as soon as COVID is out, we are definitely going to have that set up again and try to get it going. So we'll definitely, you know, maybe we can have you down with a podcast to do something there. Have um, Mason come out with us, Absolutely. do a, you know, try to get it going and get a big event going. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. We'll bring some, uh, PP pads for him and some uh, yeah. anal wipes, and we're, we're going. Yeah. <laughs> right, buddy? <laughs> look at him. Look at him. He's like, don't yeah, talk. Maybe some He's like, you were my boy. You're not no more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Talking crap about me now. Well, all right, Brett, <laughs> let her rip. Uh, oh, yeah. So, as always, I'll, I'll promote, uh, you know, my business, uh, IQ Inc. Uh, and um, uh, so, screen printing and embroidery. I do notice some nice embroidery over there on the, on the Rainbow Rescue shirt. Would be happy to earn that business if Sean is so gracious. Um, awesome. But also my son's business, Blue Beer Apparel. If you're hearing this right now, you just missed the Valentine's Day drop, the oh. Be the bee Loving collection. Uh, <laughs> but you can see his core collection and any upcoming collections at bluebeeapparel.com. Uh, and our website for screen printing and brewery is iq-inc.com. I want to picture his voice. Like if you close your eyes and listen to that <laughs> sweet voice, I don't care what he's selling. I'm in. That's a radio voice. He's got it nailed. He's got it nailed. Look, this is a long distance dedication. (laughs) He's like, I've been, I've been trying to reach you about your car warranty. (laughs) We've been trying to reach you about your expired car warranty. And what about Tony? Tony, want to add anything before we close down? Yeah, I'm opening up a stripper rescue agency. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for all that is a phenomenal idea, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> and he's going to tackle them. That's going to be his profession yeah, yeah, from yeah, back in the, the high school uh, days. He, <laughs> he, he earned the right. <laughs> so, Tony, thank you very much for coming down and uh, supporting the podcast, man. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week and you can be at the table. So this is like a, it's like a hopscotch thing. You get over there and then you come over here and Brett, I'm sorry you had to be on the chair today. No, no, this is good. But uh, I thank you for being the guy that's going to take care of our camera angle tonight. You've been definitely yeah. uh, a team player. So, um, all right, guys, podcast number 17 is in the can and uh, yeah, that's it. Hopefully uh, 18 is uh, going to be next with Tony. So we always yeah. give the peace sign when we leave and we got Mason. Just checking us out. He looks like he's tired. He's that like, guy's had enough. He's, he's like, like, can I go done. to sleep now? He looks like that drunk guy at the bar just before he <laughs> yeah. like closed the time. He's like, yeah, Tina's like, I've seen this face a million times. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to shit soon. <laughs> oh, that's the look. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, Tony's like, I've made that face a million times. <laughs> All right, guys, podcast number 17. We got to get out of here. We're going to be here all night because we we definitely could be. All right, thank you very much for supporting us. Always like, subscribe, and please share, share, share. It's the biggest uh, humbling thing you can do for us, and I appreciate everybody watching as always. And peace. Peace.